I'm George. And I'm Bob. We're the Shipping Goblins from Beetle and Grimms. Today, we're going to talk about the amazing Map Vault Collection. And with the Map Vault Collection, you get a bunch of gorgeous two-sided maps, all scaled for standard minis. Yeah, get yours now for the Map Vault Collection from Beetle and Grimm, and all the players at your table will be revved up and hyper because the only thing they'll be able to say is... Yeah. Oh, yeah, go ahead and do it. Zorn! Oh, do it again. Zorn! <laughs> Oh, 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 who do you think you are? Oh, yes, yes Mr. Lillard. Yes, sir. It's your thing. Oh, com right completely. We just thought. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna take this right to yes, the Thank you, sir. What happened? Uh, Matthew Lillard watches our show! Our <laughs> Hi, hi, hi! Welcome to the Beetle and Grimm's Pandemonium Warehouse Shopping Network. Shipping Goblin Bob here is going to tell you all about our new Platinum Edition. It's my favorite. Thanks, George. Friends, are you tired of putting a cat, a flask of poison, and a source of radiation into a sealed box and having to settle for a cat that's dead or alive? Well, Beetle and Grimm's Pandemonium Warehouse has the product for you. Introducing the Schrodinger's Cat, Platinum Edition. With the Schrodinger's Platinum Box, you can have both versions of your pet at the same time. Free yourself from objective collapse and enjoy a cat that simultaneously exists in two decoherent realities. It's time for atomic indeterminacy to enter the macroscopic domain. It's time for Schrodinger's Cat Platinum Edition. <laughs> yeah. She's totally dead. But totally alive! Only from Beetle and Grimm's Pandemonium Warehouse. Simultaneously available and sold out now. Oh, yeah, that's right. And hello! Welcome back to Panda Badgers. Hello! Um, what else is going on? Right, just making sure that everything seems to be working. It, it does. So, right, we're, we're holding there. We've got sound, we have vision, everything seems to be working. We are here, right. So, we start again. <laughs> Welcome to Band of Badgers, this pro professional out outfit here. Um, I'm me, I'm uh, Dave, otherwise known as Kingsman. I'm gonna be the games master for, for this epic adventure, which is, of course, Rise of the Rune Lords, and I've got the book around somewhere. It's, it's buried under all the core rule books and things. Um, published by Pezo. Now, as you all know, if you've seen our previous episodes, you will recognise some of these handsome faces, um, including Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to make of that. <laughs> I'm going to choose to take it as a compliment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that, that's fine. Uh, but also, that kind of was supposed to lead me on to our character, Rup. Uh, Rup is uh, played by Chris. Chris recently turned 25. Uh, so, happy birthday, Chris. Uh, we can yeah, see happy you. Birthday, Chris. Happy birthday, Chris. You've grown a beard and shaved your head. <laughs> um, you look overnight. You, I mean, he had a good last, weekend. Yeah, he had a rough weekend, by the looks. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> yes. It's a good weekend, and then the rough week afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. This time last week he was twenty-four. Now he's turned twenty-five. He looks so much older and uh, all, gr all grown up. Um, Confused no, unfortunately, yet? We are. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, Chris has come down with a bit of a bug. He's got a temperature. Let's hope it's not the dreaded plague. Um, so Joe uh, is one of our uh, one of our other badgers. He's one of our other players. He's going to be starting a separate um, game stream in a few Fridays' time. So please do join us for that. We'll be running Tomb of Annihilation um, on a fortnightly Friday basis. So thank you very much. Looking forward for to that. watching that. Joe. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be playing for a change. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward nice. to actually playing. Um, and of course, we have someone new with us. Welcome to our special guest player. This is Ryan Warren. Hello, Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Ryan. And he owns a company, as well, as well as a day job, he owns a company called uh, Session Zero Clothing. I won't take it all off. Uh, <laughs> but we've got, we got a few bits and pieces. We'll, so do, that, we'll do that later. <laughs> oh, okay. If we have, if we're gonna, break. I didn't know it was that kind of show, but uh, yeah, well, let's, let's, let's do it. I don't mind. It's always that kind of show when I'm around. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, just, 
we just passed those drinks. There we go. Um, <laughs> so we'll be having. Um, so Ryan's joining us. He's, he's brought his own character along. Here we come into the adventure. Um, halfway through this session, we'll also do a Q and A with Ryan. So if you have any questions for Ryan or for any of the players, for me, for anyone, just have a question. You know, why does it rain? We can we can we can Google that for you if you want to. But if you have any specific questions for Ryan. Put it into live chat, uh, label it as a capital Q with a full stop, and our moderator's team can uh, dig those questions out for him later. Um, plus, I believe, we didn't manage to quickly speak about this beforehand, so I'm just going to drop it on him now. Um, I believe you're going to do a giveaway for one of your t-shirts, Ryan. Uh, I am. I sure am. There we go. So you can win one of his t-shirts. We'll show you some artwork when we get to the Q&A. If not, um, the box below me You'll also find a 10% discount code, so do use that on, on the shop as well. But in live chat, if you're watching this uh, live with us right now on Twitch, you'll also find his uh, his website, web address will be over there as well, so do check it out. Um, in a separate window, don't go away from us, stay here, <laughs> tune in, you know, because that's, that's what we're here to do. Um, also, thank you very much to all our supporters. Um, it's not just Beadle and Grimm and Peso we, we like to thank, but a lot of uh, other supporters um, ha have actually helped us out and have allowed us to have discount codes. Now, in the, again, in the box below me, those will rotate every few minutes and you'll get to get 10% uh, off of various shops. Some are based in the UK, some are based in the States, some are based in Australia. They're all over the world. Um, just check them out. There's some really good deals there. And if you just use the voucher code word band of badgers, you'll save yourself a few quid. Okay? Um, as I mentioned, this is Beadle and Grimm. So, thank you very much to Beadle and Grimm for, for showing some love and supporting us. It's, it's, been a, it's been great fun. You saw the Goblins adverts at the start. They make fantastic products. But we're here, or rather they're sponsoring us, because they are putting together the Complete Character Chronicles. It's a, going to be a Pathfinder product. Um, so this is not D&D, &D, um, but the Kickstarter will be launching fairly soon. So uh, do keep an eye out. Again, when it comes up below, check out the URL um, and sign up to get the alerts. As soon as they know the dates, we'll know the dates. So it's, it's really good if you can kind of get involved with that. Um, it's going to be a fantastic Kickstarter. So really looking forward to it. As always, if you're, again, if you're new to us, we, always, we also do some giveaways. We've got uh, not just Ryan's t-shirt to give away, we've got a Beale & Grimm t-shirt giveaway. We've got a £10 gift voucher for Ed's Gaming Emporium to give away, plus a 30-day premium trial uh, for Dungeon Fog. It's a fantastic little product. It allows you to do battle maps, uh, to print them, to use them digital. You can probably import them into Roll20 Fantasy Grounds. I haven't tried it, so it's worth giving it a try. And uh, we'll be using those battle maps today. So check out what we've done. Steve, who's uh, Professor Elias there, um, he's actually created these for us for this session. So it's well worth checking those out. They also do sci-fi. They do uh, loads of uh, the zombie stuff and modern day. Do check it out. It's a great little product. As I mentioned, halfway through, we'll be having a proper chat with Ryan and we can have a, a catch up with just uh, the what the hell is going on in the world as well. And... We have um, a little bit of uh, audience voting. So again, if you've been here before, you would have remembered we are uh, creating a character from uh, Matthew Lillard. Matthew Lillard, a Hollywood actor. Uh, I think it's safe to say the Hollywood actor. Sounds pretty good. Um, so he's also part of Beadle and Grimm, if you didn't know that. And if you didn't know Beadle and Grimm, check them out as well. Um, so we are, Matt will be joining us in a future episode in a few weeks time, hopefully when it coincides with the Beaver and Grimm Kickstarter. But what you'll see again in the box below me is a chance for you to create Matt's playable character. We've already chosen the race back on previous episodes. But last episode, um, we were choosing the class of what Matt's character is going to be. And so far, we have three ties, I believe, Steve. Is that still the case? Yeah, yeah. When I checked yesterday, we had a three-way tie between Barbarian... Um, Oracle and Rogue, I believe. no, Monk, sorry. It was Barbarian, Monk and Oracle. Okay, so so uh, we're going to keep the class vote open for this episode as well so we get a clear winner. So yeah, head over to the straw poll we're posted in chat 
and cast your vote and, and have your say on what you would like Mac to play. Cool. So while that is going on, and that will pop up every 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 now and then, we're just going to have a quick look and see who's in uh, chat. Who have we got in live chat? Maguire got, Review. Oh, Hello. Thank you very week. much for joining us again. Gallant Goblin is in. Um, got a few people in that haven't joined us before. Uh, Zombies ate my brain. Has got to go for um, uh, username of the evening so far. Um, so if I get to choose, if idea. I get we to should... choose the winner again, then <laughs> then that's that's my vote. That, that that's something we should do. We should pick uh, what we think is. To, we should do our own vote. The players, us, should do our own vote on the best the best name in live chat, and we will give them a t-shirt or something like that. Or How about when we finish doing the intros and just before we start playing, we'll do we we'll do a player vote um, before we start playing. Best best user in uh, in chat at the moment, and um, we'll give away a dungeon and fog code. Can you? Okay. Wait, what we're doing it right now, Steve. Sorry. Did you say you're doing it right now? No, no. Uh, we'll, we'll do it when we we just before we start playing. So after we've done all of the. Um, intros so i'll let you finish i'll shut up now <laughs> I, just, I was just reading what Maguire. so Maguire <laughs> has just climbed a tree to get a signal now that that's, that's dedication that is yeah there you go <laughs> that's dedication um, for those of you who don't know Maguire, go to youtube and uh type in search box Maguire review it does fantastic again I, I was talking to him the other day on uh instagram or youtube or something and we were talking about He's got uh, the prototype for a Rambo game, a Rambo board game, which is a, a trilogy set. And I was on there saying, who, who would do this? And he actually wrote back and said, no, it's, it looks like a really good game. That It's spot on in terms of the game plan stuff. So, again, um, I love review companies. You've got Gallant Goblin, Maguire Review. For, for whatever reason, they convinced me to buy stuff. I, I don't know what it is, but uh, they do. It works on me. So, do... Absolutely, go and check them out and spend some money. Uh, who else we got? 8 bit cost TV. Uh, oh, Jeff's in the chat. He's promoting himself. Well done. 8 bit cost subscribed. Cantina 13, thank you very much for joining us. I know Session Zero knows you. <laughs> well done. Wow. Cantina's here. <laughs> Get out, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who else we got? Da -da 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 -da. Uh, <clears throat> Moon Men Captain Faye. That's got to be a good name. Yeah, it's a good name. Stormfell. Cool. Why are you coming up with Who's Your Daddy? I don't have that in my list. No, no, it's not a person. Someone's, uh, I, I, I should say, I, the, who is your daddy and what does he do line. So that's at the end. It's, it's, oh, it's that, Jeff's, that. Jeff's Arnold line for the week. That, you should do it as a poll, Jeff. You go in there and you start we, self-marketing. We'll do that next time. It's a lot easier to, to pre-do it. Right, right. So, 8 bit um, cost TV played Starfinder. Yeah. You might like to watch your that. one, Steve, when you DM it. Uh, yeah, that's uh, possibly in a few weeks, or, or we may we may be uh, we may be transitioning to Alien. We have um, we Yeah, <laughs> we, we may be doing we may be doing Alien Alien RPG before we do. Uh... So uh, it, the, here's here's a thing for for you in the audience. Here's a question: Would you? So this is in addition to Rune Lords. We're looking at a few other programs. We're doing Tomb of Annihilation with Joe, uh, the, the bearded one. Um, uh, so he's going to go full Viking. We're, we're determined to go full Viking with, with Joe there, with, with, labelled as Rob. Um, we Before will he's do it. Now back into public. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, so we've got Tomb of Annihilation coming on a fortnightly Friday night, fortnightly Friday night basis. Yeah, that works. Um, and Steve is going to move over uh, to sci-fi so he's going to go into the, the far future and either kill us with face huggers um, or we'll, we'll go Starfinder so we'll, we'll put that open out to the uh, t 
to you, the live viewers, if you're doing it in YouTube, it's too late. And um, we did this a while ago. <laughs> but if you want to put it in the descriptions below YouTube, that's perfectly fine too. Um, right, are we done? There's enough shout outs. We'll keep shouting out. If we, again, just say any old stuff in, in the chat, keep it going. And we've got chances to win, win stuff in a bit. Um, we won't, it's not exactly in the half, halfway point or at the end. We'll just do it anywhere. So we're going to do. We're going to pull a thirty-day premium dungeon fog code now. So uh, my vote goes to zombies. Ate my brain. Um, so we'll, yep. we'll go around. Zombies. Oh, so that's two for zombies. Josh. Zombies. Uh, I think zombies as well. Is that uh, a zombies from Joe? Zombies. Yes. Yeah, zombies. Uh, Ryan. I think I'm out voted anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, the Session Zero Clothing, that's a pretty cool username. <laughs> they are, yeah. How did, how did we not see that coming? <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go, let's go zombies, yeah. i tell you what, Session Zero, let's give away a Session Zero t-shirt to Session Zero. That's, that's, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> we'll win. Works for me. Save <laughs> you some postage. <laughs> You have to do. You have to do the whole thing. You have to post it to yourself and receive it, um, and then write up a review. <laughs> yeah, do, do an un unboxing and a review. I'll do an unboxing video. Yeah, yeah. yeah wonder yeah. what this could be. <laughs> you should, you should just, just just to name drop some viral. more. Just, just to name drop some more. You could send your T-shirts to uh, Maguire Review and Gallant Goblin. I'm sure they'd happily uh, do a, do an unboxing and unveiling. It's all. Uh, yeah, right. It's all right role play that. related, which is good. Right. So, right. boss, can we have a recap? Yeah, I was going to say, everybody ready? Yeah. So, everybody so. ready? Here's Yay! Yeah. Yes. yes. Whoop, whoop. So, last session, you managed to find your way to the Glassworks factory. You found the slightly, slightly dead slightly dead body of Longico, who is Amico's father. So the, the night before you saw them have a heated argument and he tried to drag her away. And in the morning you found a crumpled note left in Amico's bedroom. She hadn't slept in her bed. And it meant it was signed by someone called Suto. You made your way to the glassworks, fought some goblins who had dismembered many of the workers there and Suto, along with the goblins, had poured molten glass over his own father. As you defeated Suto, you managed to find the way downstairs to the basement, where you found Amiko, tied up, beaten and battered, and rather than escort her home safely, like the brave adventurers you are, you decided to give her a bow and a dagger, send her back, <laughs> As you carried on to the... We did also give her some arrows. We didn't just give her a bow. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. just a bow. Yeah. Uh, good point. And, and Rupp healed her, I believe, didn't he? So. Yes, Rupp did heal her as well. And then you decided to continue on down the, uh, the tunnels because you found something had been sealed off. So, what do you wish to do? Well, should we start walking down? Yeah, we were tunnels? heading back to the open, sealed tunnel, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. as it were. Um, so I guess, yeah, good idea. I say we're going deeper underground. Getting in early. <laughs> Getting in early. Mm. Down, down, deeper and down. <laughs> so, uh, it, how, how is Harrison acting? Uh, I, uh, I'm I, uh, uh, yeah. I, I am still profusely sweating, uh, tapping my feet, um, and yeah, very, very agitated at this stage. Okay. Hmm. Brother, what is wrong with you? Oh, um, well, it's, it's short, it's narrow spaces, and uh, uh, I, I get a bit uh, claustrophobic, you see. Uh, <laughs> I, w I don't want to stay much in here, if we can avoid it, but uh, if, 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 if I've got uh, Lana, I'll, uh, I'll be okay. But you're also a small brother. I mean, imagine how I feel with my shoulders. They nearly touch the edge of the shaft. 
fine. I'll uh, I'll be okay. Just uh, just keep me safe, and I'll keep you safe. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to keep you safe. <laughs> Based on what we've seen so far, mm. you are the liability to yourself. Well, that but was a good backflip, I suppose, wasn't it? Huzzah! Just don't go jumping onto any tables full of glass, brother. Well, that was unfortunate. I, I, I got distracted by the goblins, I suppose. So, are we going, or...? You're, you're, Let's continue. You've already started, yeah. You're walking down a dark, dark tunnel. Do you want marching orders, uh, Dave? I want marching orders, and what are you using as a light source? The tunnel is oh, pitch right. black once you leave the, Shall... the main basement. Oh, has anybody got any um, unnatural light sources? Asking out again. Does anybody want to use any magic light, or shall I light a torch? Let, let me look in my adventurer's pack. I'll see if I can find something. I've not got any magical light, but I can. I think I Pulls out a mag light. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, uh, I have a torch. I have five torches. Would anyone like a torch? I have my own brother, but thank you. Does anyone need a torch? Otherwise, just for me. Yes, please. I'll, I'll have one. <laughs> okay. Uh, one torch for you. And uh, Harrison will use his flint and steel to uh, light one of the, the torches and one for himself. Well, using the, the fire from the other one. So, me and the uh, Rupp are now brandishing torches in one hand. I'm guessing that's enough light for quite a bit of the tunnel, isn't it? Dave? Yeah, there's enough to light the tunnel, yeah. light your way. Okay, so um, is there enough space in the tunnel for a 2x2? Two two? No, single file. As you continue single down file. the corridor, um, you're looking at the stonework and the shadows that reflect off your torch, and you realise that um, you've gone into... Um, it's, a, it's certainly a man-made tunnel of some kind, and it's very, very old, but continues in almost a straight line. Um, do we want to be careful because these were our uh, smugglers' tunnels, weren't they? That's what it said. Probably a good idea. We don't know what else is down here at the minute. We step lightly. We can talk as... Step yeah. lightly and keep our eyes open. Good idea. Does it? Does it? Na does, does it keep narrowing, or is it just uh, the same narrow? Uh, no, it... as you continue, so you, you're walking for a good kind of 20 minutes. Um, as again, I'm walking down, Dave, I'm going to keep doing like um, perception to see if I notice anything dodgy. Okay. Um, so 16. I'll do, like, I don't know how many rolls you want me to do. It depends on the how more, long the tunnel is, I guess. Doesn't with, it? with that, so the more you continue down, uh, down the corridor, the more echoes and vibrations that seem to be appearing through the tunnel. There were some strange noises, low rumblings, there's a hum. It's almost vibrating with the noise that's coming through. But it's a single corridor taking you somewhere. Okay, I'm going to uh, tell because he's going to pull out his battle axe and his shield in his other hand. Um, just in case something decides to so jump. Are you in front? You're taking point. Yeah, I'll be at the front. Yeah. And who's and got I'll the be... torch? Uh, I, I, Harrison has one of the torches. Um, you, you take... the other. Yeah. So, I'm trying to work out where which the which the order was. I think I was behind Yelena because um, well, Harrison was Yelena because I want to make sure that I stay behind someone. If um, <laughs> if Rupp's got a torch as well, he could probably fit. No, no pun intended. Between my legs, <laughs> <laughs> with, with, a, with a torch. Yeah, a and as long as he holds the torch out far, <laughs> he doesn't just have to hold it above his head. <laughs> no, I, I didn't mean directly under me. I meant like you know, just in front of me slightly. Sort of you thing, just want to put the small guy in front of you with a torch. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, he's probably better at checking for possible traps. You know. How tall is the tunnel? Would he be able to sit on your shoulders? Uh, the, tu be... the tunnel height uh, varies, but it, it still averages around 10 foot, 10 foot high. Oh yeah, it probably would, yeah. Yeah, I can stick him on my shoulders, if he, want, if he wants to. Rob, maybe you should go on my shoulders and you can light the way and I can hit things when they come out. 
Okay. And I'm just going to slowly, like, just climb up his backpack and just hoist myself up on this, and sort of perch on his backpack. <laughs> That's fine. Well, how, how, Rob, how tall are you, <laughs> Six foot four. Right, yeah, still, I, I definitely had to wash this week. <laughs> Did you change your underwear, Rob? <laughs> what day is it? <laughs> Surely you mean what month is it, Rob? <laughs> so we've got Tolkus, Rob. Who's next? I'll be behind uh, Yelena. So wherever Yelena is, I'll be behind her. Well, get the back. Okay, you, so need be in, you need to be in the centre, uh, Master Harrison, um, so that the light dis distributes itself equally uh, across the party. You know, I, I, I do believe you should be in the centre this week. And Captain Yelena, there, uh, she can follow you up. Don't worry, she, I'm, I'm sure she'll watch over you. Make sure you don't trip over her or anything, and make a fool of yourself. I was uh, going to say, I'll, good old Prof, making sure he puts him where he can do the least damage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I suppose I'll go in the middle. So Harrison. You're just trying to keep you safe, Harrison. Mm. Harrison, uh, Nicolo's brother. Harrison huffs and uh, <laughs> goes into the middle uh, with, his, with his torch. Okay, so you estimate you've been walking for about a uh, half hour now, and you come to another part in the wall which uh, again appears to have been once bricked up with, with more modern looking bricks but again has been pulled down the bricks lay in a disarray all over the floor both sides front and back or you can continue down the corridor going or you can go into this new entry sorry you're uh... you're muted Sharon oh am I? Oh, if you were if you were talking, there's nothing. No, coming. no, I was looking but, at something. <laughs> can can Harrison listen out to know if any where this, the rumbling sound is coming from further? Yes, you can. Just do a perception check. So seventy plus seven. So yeah, that's uh, twenty-four. Okay. Again, the the rumbling and the vibrations in this kind of cave tunnel. You, you're now, um, especially you, because. You're feeling, you're getting in cold sweats. Uh, the only light you've got is from the torches, which do flicker a bit. But that cold sweat is kind of doing you a little bit of a favor as you notice a cool breeze coming from the direction you were walking in, but not necessarily from this new entryway. Well. I suppose this, uh, not sure where we're going, guys. Uh, should we head on to more of the darkness or should we just head out? Uh, it, are we, do we know what we're doing down here? We're Looking for a goblin, Miko. Oh, I know we found a Miko. Yes. Are you okay, Professor? No, no. <laughs> You've been uh, on uh, the homebrew <laughs> vodka again, Professor. No, uh, um, distracted him, yeah. We're trying to find Still more information perturbed. about this invasion. Mm. We're possibly yes, looking we're... for 200 goblins. The, the idea of my home being invaded by these foul creatures is, uh, yes, it's, it's put me off somewhat. This uh, this wall appears to have been intentionally vandalised. This can we, may can we be our it, best route. Can we tell if it came, if the wall was pushed into the tunnel or out into the... No, as I, as, I, as I mentioned, the bricks Sorry. are on both sides fairly equally, okay. all just spaced out. There's no kind of sign of an impact from the other side if it came through. Um, the, this wall was dismantled. Uh, so, chaps, I think we should go down into where the bricks have been dismantled. Because uh, I think that's possibly where they're coming in from. <clears throat> I'd agree. Okay, yeah, that sounds okay. a good idea. But I uh, in terms of the, the bricks where they've been dismantled, are the bricks laid down or are they just missing completely? No, they were all over the floor. Oh, okay, fine. Right. I wasn't sure if there's some kind of brick thie uh, thieving goblin that's no. uh, walking around. They're invisible bricks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. shall, shall we head on, guys? And... Yes. Sounds like a good idea, but just a minute, and Yelena's going to take a piece of chalk out of her bag and make a mark on the wall so that we know where we came from. What does so the mark look like? Good idea, Yulena. Um, 
it's something that no one else can read. So I've kind of put like this way, but it's in Druidic. Okay. Well planned. <laughs> not, not just Yelena was here. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> don't Might go be this the same way. thing. <laughs> okay, so you're going to go into the tunnel, the new tunnel you found. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can everyone make a perception check, please, as you make your way through? That's not very good. Well, I got very good. Tolkus rolls at an 18 on the dice, which is 24 total. I also yeah, got 24. I, I also got 24. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did not get 24. I got 15. Oh, <laughs> Harrison. I got 16. Oh, no, hold on. I've got eight, eight perceptions, so I've got 26. Oh, oh show off. <laughs> wow. Okay, uh, Yelena, you hear it first. There, It sounds like someone running but silent footed like pad 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 and it's picking up speed it definitely seems to be coming towards you okay so it's in front of us not behind us no it sounds like it's behind you uh, behind us okay i'm gonna grab harrison's shoulder and then kind of turn around so that he will turn not so he's in front of me as a human shield but just so that he he might be able to alert people further up without me saying anything. Okay. If that makes sense. So you're going to turn me round and I'm going to be facing the same way as you? Yes. Okay. All I'm right. assuming that you're going to be compliant. I think at this stage I'm just... Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a shivering wreck at this stage, so... <laughs> <laughs> Slightly damp shoulder. Yeah. I'm sweating Point. profusely. Move through it. <laughs> okay. So I'm now facing with Yelena. Okay, I, I am looking. Rear. Yeah, to the rear, yeah. yeah. What, you, Yelena, what, what, what are you doing? There's something, someone coming. I can hear someone. Okay, and uh, Harrison uh, draws his uh, rapier uh, and with his other hand brandishing the torch in the general direction of with Yelena. Okay. What's going on? Uh, there seems to be something behind us, guys. I'll, uh, uh, Yelena turned me round and I'm a bit scared. <laughs> do you see anything? Oh, I'll, I'll turn around slowly. Do I do I see anything behind me? Do a perception check. Uh, an unnatural 20, so 20 mm -hmm. total. Okay. This time, now you're kind of focused. You, you're looking back. So the, the torch from Harrison only goes so far into the blackness where you came from and you, you're trying to look into the darkness and you're trying to use your eyes and, and concentrate on what the sounds around. Um, the chattering teeth from, from uh, Harrison is putting you off slightly, but you can hear something. And it's I would like to take a slow breath through my nose and see if I can sense anything on, on the breeze or in the air using my... Um, in precise sense of smell that I have because I'm a sensate node. The the smells that you receive are almost salty, but that's Just that's Harrison. been growing stronger. Yeah, that's been going stronger <laughs> as you've been going further in this direction. That Yummy. hasn't come from behind you. You can't you can't smell anything that's coming up up behind you. Are the footsteps still coming towards us or have they yeah. stopped? Pat, 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 pat. Okay. Something's, run, something's running towards you. Do they sound humanoid or animal? So is it two footed or four footed? It doesn't. It's. I would say it's. It's two footed. It's mm -hmm. not like a gallop. <laughs> no, no. This is, is a running speed. <laughs> but it doesn't sound booted. It's not people in armour. It's a singular okay. person or thing, um, but one, yeah, one, one set of foot. Let us prepare so ourselves. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, 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 could, it, it could be Amico coming back to help. It could be. Uh, That's, uh, that might be correct. Talk us on rock. Can you do a perception check for me, please? Yes. 
as you were in front, and we were doing a perception check as we were going into the tunnel, I'm going to say that you're in the next tunnel, and everyone else is still at the opening. Well, it easier. I got a 19 total. I got okay. 12. Tolkis, you hear... Now you're in the new tunnel. It's almost as soon as you step through this opening in the, in the tunnel, you hear... It's like that rumbling is stronger. There's... There's no breeze in this corridor. Like, you were, you were feeling a slight breeze. You didn't notice it before. It was, it was much colder where you were. Here, it's warm. It's fetid. And every now and then, you... you your ears twitch up, then they're, they're not rumbles, it's not underground noises. It sounds like something is maybe a roar? You can't quite make it out. But that's ahead of you. So, what does everyone wish to do? Well I Tolkis will explain what he can hear to the rest from the other direction, so I can hear something a bit like uh, a roar front of us down this new tunnel uh, when it's described does Yelena think it's the sea have they moved towards the cliffs or have they moved away I'm gonna do it as a let's do it as a as a history check just to okay. kind of use your memory of where the glass factory was in the town history history, history. is there such a thing as a history check I if don't you have the history law. I do not okay. have hist I don't have history law. I've got sailing law. <laughs> Obviously. How about society <laughs> instead? Do a society check, that's fine. Okay, society. Um, I don't add anything to that. So that would be a flat thirteen. You got thirteen. Mm -hmm. You tr you're trying to picture where you were. So from the location of you you your thinking is correct. Uh, where the glass factory was in relation to the coast, you knew you was right, practically right on the beach. So you're trying to picture what the basement look, might look like and where in relation you have been walking. But surely you've been walking for half an hour now. You would have easily, have, you'd be underwater by now. Yeah. Hmm. So maybe we are. You, you're going perpendicular possibly, or back okay. under the town. Right. Okay. This could be. A another tunnel that comes out somewhere else in the town okay. in terms of the the, the, the footsteps or the, the running uh, how close are they now Can we? Have, is it louder now or is it are they still far away well you're in with Tolkis uh, no sorry you're, you're outside uh, I was talking about um, yeah, do another perception check ok uh, 15 plus 7 so 22 ok yes you can now hear um Huffing and puffing, so whoever's coming down the corridor, they are running very fast, and it's um, almost athletic of, of how they are running. They are going at full pelt down the corridor where you've already come from, and you can now hear them as they come down the corridor. They're going to be here any second, so you need to. Uh, Elena's going to put her stuff like out in a defensive position. Okay. In front of her. Um, Harrison is going to uh, throw the torch towards, uh, in front of, not at Yelena, but around, <laughs> around Yelena, in front, in front of her, so that at least she's she's seeing light in front of her, and I will be seeing the light in her direction. So I've got another hand free for something else if we get into a combat situation. So. Okay. So, so the first thing you see. Um, just at the edge of your vision in terms of into the darkness, you see these two, uh, these two orbs kind of um, almost cat-like in structure, just glinting the light, reflecting the light back at you. What do you wish to do? Uh, what height are they? Are they little? Or are they... Uh, they're not running on the floor. They're about, you know, humanoid height. Okay. Um... I think Elaine's going to go, stop. Who are you? And point her staff outwards. Okay, and Ryan, you hear this. What do you wish to do? I say, uh, oh, hello. Um, I'm Zambanala. Uh, I'm friends with Amiko. Um, I'm, I'm 
looking for uh, you, I think. Hello. So, uh, uh, Amiko made it out safely then? Uh, yes, yes, she did. Uh, well, not safe. She, um, no, bruised and beaten and, um, well, you know, maybe someone could have helped her. She said she was by herself. I don't know. Um, but she's okay, yeah. She's back in, she's back up, upstairs, you know, the town. Oh, that's, that's, that's good. We, 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 uh, well, there's there's lots going on, and and we couldn't really afford the time to to escort her back to town, so we had to uh, give her a bow and some arrows, and, and you know, unfortunately, send her on her way alone. You know, we 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 cleared upstairs, we got rid of all the goblins, but it's still still concerning that um, she she had to make her way own way back. It, it wasn't what we wanted to do, but we had no choice. I'm, I'm glad she made it back, but I'm I'm, I'm a little confused. Um, uh, why are you here then? Oh well. You guys found the thing I've been looking for. You you did it. You you solved it. You this is exactly where I was supposed to be, and you you guys got here first. Would you look at that? Found a big bada boom cat and bag now. That's crazy. This is crazy. Well, you, what have you been looking for? The the tunnels. I didn't know where this place was. I've been looking for this for for weeks. I I've, I've been studying with with Mr. Q. And, and I've been reading all these books about this, the civil day, the civilization, this, 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 it's been 10,000 years. No one's been, no one's even known about it. And you guys found it. Look, that's crazy. You guys are the heroes and adventurers. This is wild in the, in the flesh. Would you look at that? Oh, well. <laughs> oh no, you started him off. <laughs> <laughs> Instantly, the cold sweat has gone from Harrison. He's like, and Harrison background again. Oh, nice to meet you. Well, uh, well, are you? Would you like to join us? I suppose it's. Uh, we, we could use a uh, someone. Oh, you sure help. could. You don't even know what you're going into, do you? You have no idea. Well, there no, is a small chance we could bump into two hundred goblins, but that's about it. Goblins? I'm more worried about the demons. Uh, okay. Uh, tell me more about these demons. Well, I've been doing all my studying, like I said. I've been reading the books and all the papers that Mr. Q has, and and I've been putting all these things together. And there's there's all sorts of stuff that that's from this this Thessalonian civilization, and you guys found it. And I've been I did. It's right below us. It was right below our feet the whole time, right underneath the salty dragon. Now, now, now you're talking my language, Thessalonian well, and I'll, I'll ream off uh, uh, a, a nice Thessalonian welcome. Um, uh, yes, uh, are, are you a fellow scholar? Oh, of course, yes. And, and, and you say that these are Thessalonian ruins? I, I sure hope so, or else I'm totally wrong, and this is just all for nothing. You guys found something totally different, but uh, this, this... I guess we'll find out together, huh? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very excited now. Yeah, I was, I was a little bit concerned earlier. That, yeah, we'd bump into two hundred goblins, but well, yeah. The, the, the oh no, there's definitely recurring. goblins. Oh, but they seem most inconsequential. Yeah, you know, think of the prize at the end. Yeah, I, yes, this is, this is very good, very good. This this kind of confirms everything that I'd always suspected about Sandpoint. You know, the old the old lighthouse, um, the, the the dry well behind there. Well, you know. I've always suspected there's been something underneath Sandpoint and that that was some sort of access point and I, I'm pleased that my suspicions weren't uh, weren't wildly incorrect. Yes, there's what well, let's go. We need we need to, to crack on and well, you know, I guess we need to sort out the goblins, but we need to find these <laughs> ruins and, 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 and get to the um well, get to the treasure. Yeah. And Harrison, I'm not talking about gold here. What I'm talking about is knowledge. Knowledge is the true treasure in this world. Professor, I totally we, agree. We've got goblins and possibly demons. Um, maybe yes. the knowledge comes below those. Oh yeah, we 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 we'll, we'll priorities. Talk well, us. We'll, we'll make short work of the goblins. I'm sure, just as he did upstairs. Mr. Professor, I'll I'll uh, I'll I'll do it all. I'll kill them all, and we'll we'll get the glory. Yelena's going to turn around, pat you on the shoulder, and go. Of course you will, Harrison. Uh, Yelena, could you be uh, a, a kind soul and 
pick my torch up, please? Mm-hmm. Elena moves to one side <laughs> and gestures for you to pick your torch up. <laughs> uh, Ed, Ed, excuse me, uh, cat friend. Harrison. Harrison. Oh, yeah, no, don't worry, I got it. Don't shoot me. <laughs> no big deal. What, what, what was your name again? Sorry. Zamba. Zamba Nala. Zamba Nala. That's quite Zamba, a exotic Zamba, you name. do not have to do everything for him. No. We, we oh, went through that, this this morning okay. with him. If, if you guys are going to be Zamba's new best friends, I'll do whatever you guys want. I don't, I don't care. Ah, well, uh, Harrison rubs his hands. <laughs> <laughs> I may have found a servant. Yelena shakes her head. <laughs> and so, what, uh, Ryan, Ryan, what does Zamba look like? Uh, he is a hairless, bald uh, cat folk. Ooh. Uh, he's oh. about 5'8", gray skin, just regular like brown robes. Uh, no, nothing on his feet. Pretty much has nothing on him except for like his, his book of spells, his his, uh, his dagger. Pretty simple, pretty, pretty basic. Cool. I'm imagining sort of like a sphinx cat now, because you said hairless and bald. Yeah, yeah, yeah. basically. Cool. Um, but I, I gesture towards uh, Professor Elias, and I say, okay, so you're Professor Elias. Um, listen, listen. I'll tell the others, but I, to- I totally agree with you. I think knowledge is, is number one key, like most important thing. The demons, the goblins, whatever, but we got to figure this stuff out for our brains first, and then everything else comes after, you know? I was just going to poke his head around the corner and be like, but you can't, you can't spend knowledge. <laughs> you can't eat it either. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Rob, you, you, make you can use your knowledge point. to gain things to spend, you know? <laughs> You say demons. Do you know what kind of demons? Oh, I have no idea. We're gonna learn. We're gonna find out together. Oh, I would guess it's the one that's in the journal. I would guess so too. Uh, succubus. Yeah. Succubi. This suddenly got interesting. Yes, yeah, succubi. And quasi's aid. Unless I. Was uh, it? Was it? Yes. Yes. My memory is 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 not a good hour for me. You saw these things with your eyes? The the closets and the succubus? You saw these things? No, not not yet, fortunately. Oh, not yet. I was really looking forward to asking you what they looked like, but I guess we'll find out together, huh? You could show him the journal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you, you have it in your, you, you have it in your backpack, because, you know, I, I don't like carrying too much equipment. Uh, we'll all thought... pass the journal for us. <laughs> yeah, I... I... So, so Tolkus will pass the, uh, the journal to me, I presume. I will get out the page of the erotic drawings and take one last, uh, last look. Um, <laughs> before passing Mental it. Mental photograph. Uh, when, I, when I see the erotic drawings, I say, oh, this is wildly inappropriate. There's a lady around. You guys can't be just having this all. And I fold it up and I, and I hand it back to him. And I, You're and very I sweet. I've seen much worse. <laughs> Uh, and I look through the journal. Is there anything in there that makes it to, to me? Uh, nothing. Uh, there's nothing unusual there at all. Most of it is ramblings from Suto, where okay. he. Um, this is this is basically his dear diary, and he made lots of sketches of this woman that is named Noala, and he was infatuated with her to the point where he is now. He, he now killed his own dad. Just yeah. as a diversion, really. Covered him in glass. Did do you uh, do you recognise that phrase at all there, uh, Nala? The the, the Mastu's fires. Is that familiar to you? Are, you? are you a scholar of demonology as well, by any chance? Uh, do I recognise any of that? The the Mashtu, as you from your, from your own studies, you know the Mashtu to be uh, the name of the a deity. Oh right 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 right. Um so yeah. Uh, oh yeah, of course. Everybody knows the Lamastu, the you know, the big one, the big mother of monsters. You didn't know that one? No, no, no. My my studies are limited uh, to to Thessalonia. You know, I'm very focused on Thessalonia. Oh yeah, obsessive no, even. She's the head honcho of the monsters. You know, the the mother of them all. The mom, you know. Yeah, that that that, that that's fascinating. That, that really is fascinating. We, we must converse more. But, um, well... Let's talk and walk. Yes. <laughs> you, you echo my, my um, sentiments there, Tulkus. You're welcome. 
You think that Ramashtu's down here? You think that you're going to actually find Big Mom? Well, that, that, that's interesting because you know the, the book says that that um, well the, this this lady, in fact, she she used to live in the town. She was um, the girlfriend of uh, um, uh, Suto, Suto. Uh, Noala, and she was she was the daughter of Tobin. To Tobin was the, the the previous vicar in the church, and uh, about five five or so years ago, after the whole chopper mess ended. Um, and uh, Sheriff Baylor uh, captured him. Well, the, the church was burnt down, and Tobin was murdered. And and Noala, uh, she, she unfortunately also perished in the fire. Uh, and it seems that, um, well, she's come back somehow. I'm not quite sure whether there's, a, there's some undead involved there, or uh, some some zombification, or or whether Suto's behind that. But it appears that she has some sort of demonic heritage because she talks about her mother's grace and transforming herself. Um, using Lamash 2's fires, so yes, if if Lamash 2 is uh, is the mother of monsters, then that that seems entirely plausible. So so maybe we're going to come across some sort of uh, I don't know some some centre of power. It's all, it's all very exciting tying that in with the Thessalonian uh, heritage as well. You know, we could be finding something very unique indeed. Very excited, but you know we, we'd have to get past these goblins first. Um, yeah, you know, if we can get get it over and done with as quickly as possible, so we can get to get to whatever's going on at the root of the story, and, and we can spend as much time as possible, you know, studying this area. So, uh, I totally agree. We should we should get moving. Let's go. So, so um, Rup's gonna go back in and climb back onto Tolkas, onto his shoulders, and just sort of pat him on the head. <laughs> <Yeah>. Mush. <laughs> yeah. Brush <laughs> my hair while you're up there, Rup. <laughs> well, okay. let's go. Thinking See? of like a ratatouille type thing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Elaine is going to make space so that um, Zambo can be next to um, the professor. So if they want to keep talking about history and whatnot, yes. they, it's a little bit easier for them. Okay. So we're going to continue down the slightly warmer, mustier tunnel, yeah? Yep. Cool. Yes. So you continue on for maybe another 10 minutes. Uh, Keeping an eye out for traps and stuff like that. That's fine. And the torchlight is lighting up, uh, again, the walls. And you notice the floor um, is starting to change slightly. There's more broken, broken brick underneath the first layer of dirt. So, you know, there was previously something here. But the, the earth above and the walls have kind of crumbled down on it to, to cover most of, of that up. It's just bits and bits and pieces of broken brick and uh, possibly some tile. But you notice from the light, Tolkis, that the, um, the corridor you're following um, opens up wider in certain sections, but is starting to curve. And on that curve on the right hand side, you see two Openings, almost natural openings on the right hand side. What do you wish to do? I should point them out to the group and say, um, Be quiet, everybody. There is some openings on the side here. We shall move up to them stealthily, shall we? Yes, I think so. Can we hear anything apart from? At the moment, numbers? it's at the moment it's quite quiet where you are. Um, there's still, you can't quite tell if it's a feeling, a vibration, or if it's a sound vibration, but there's definitely something. And the air is becoming, again, as you've been walking for sort of 10 minutes, uh, certainly less fresh, more dense, so more you, humid. So you're saying, I can feel it calling in the air tonight, yeah? <laughs> Yeah, nearly. Nearly. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's getting uh, hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take off all your clothes, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Can't take any more naked, Rob. Oh, we definitely, please keep your clothes on. Don't forget the lady that's here. Be, be decent, guy. Come on. Don't, you're Yelena's doing... halfway taking her top off. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as, as Yelena does that, my eyes sort of like light up and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, oh, have you not her. seen a female body before? Mm. Yes, of course. And uh, and Harrison looks sheepish. And, uh... <laughs> it's all both. Oh, I, yeah. I totally think he's lying. 
Oh, he's definitely okay, like no. asking yeah. about where he got them scars. Yeah. <laughs> tell me about. Tell me about it. Well, it's a story about a man. I yeah. like the way you got two openings. You're like, you know, underground. You can hear roars, yeah. and he's going to say, "Well, <laughs> well, Tolkien is just going to and by proxy, Rupp is just going to walk off towards the first opening that is in the way." Yeah. Harrison's yeah. going to entertain everyone with another story about his, his yeah. epic. <laughs> He's Let's go check out this opening, Rob. I, I, I give uh, Zambanala a condensed version of the uh, of the eye thing, which includes a fight with a lion in a uh, cage. With uh, the animal uh, changes every time he tells it. Yes. <laughs> it was a tiger. Oh, last time it was a tiger. <laughs> last time it was a lion and a tiger. Oh, yes, a I mean tiger. I get them mixed up. Yeah, some of those other cats can be so <laughs> offensive. <laughs> So, Tolkus, you go up to the first opening on the right-hand side. Uh, Rupp is on your shoulders, carrying a torch. We shall peer round slowly. Okay, so as you kind of look into... Um, it appears to be a chamber. It's kind of like a kidney-shaped chamber, so it kind of goes around a corner. But you can, you can see the, 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 the wall from the light of the torch as it curves around. And there's something sticking out, part of the wall. So you can't go all, you know, you'd have to go into the chamber, into the room, to have a look all the way around. But it, it kind of curves around in a kidney shape. Right, I'll, I'll um, tell Rupp to climb down. And then I will take a step into the room and see, and see what's around the corner. Okay, so to, to, get, to, to get into the room, to, you're going to be 15, 20 foot into the room. Yep. Okay. You can, as you go around... Rupp, um, you're sticking with me, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. just basically be behind you to give you some light still. So cool. with the light, because the light's behind you, your body is casting shadow onto the wall. But at least it's some kind of light as it goes yeah. around the corner. You see, straight away, you see the uh, the outline before the light even touches him. An, an outline of a figure. He's close to the wall. He's facing the wall, so his back is towards you. And you see clothes are ripped and torn and tattered just hanging off of his shoulders and hanging off around his waist but he's facing the wall and he's kind of his head is down so you can see his kind of bare shoulders and where the, where the clothing is is he making any noises like maybe low rumbling murmurs or anything no just imagine the scene from Blair Witch mm. this person's just staring at the wall do you guys do you guys know this man but you're outside with um, oh. Harrison. <laughs> so, okay, um, Tolkus and Rupp have gone in. Right, I'm going to um, I'm going to poke the guy with my shield and say, "Hey, what are you doing?" Okay, so you're going to go right up and push. Yeah, him and I'm going to I'm going to put my shield in front of me and yeah. and just tap him with it. Um, hey. I will stay by the entrance to the room and just keep holding the torch and... well you've already gone halfway in so yes, you're, yeah, you're in the middle of the room yeah but you know a distance away from yeah Tolkus has stepped you've let Tolkus step ahead <laughs> yeah meet, meet Shield Tolkus, Tolkus can do it yeah um, so as you tap this person no, they're not as big as you they're maybe uh, 5 foot 4 5 foot 5 um, what seems to be a lean build and they you push them kind of forward and then they slowly kind of turn round and, and face you bodily. And as they kind of look up, you can see that their eyes are a different colour. They're definitely humanoid. And they look up at you and immediately the jaw distends and goes all black and goes into a scream right into your face. A slobber and spit and stuff goes everywhere. And then you notice that the hands are out and uh, the fingers are distended but end in sharp claws. I'm going um, to hit him. For those, <laughs> for those who are, does he uh, scream verbally or is it just a soundless scream? Just no, it's the, I can't do the scream. No, no, it's, it's whether we'd hear it. That's all. Yes, you hear okay. a howling screech come from uh, more animal than person coming from this chamber, and with the sound from this chamber, it just ricochets all around, boom, 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 down the down corridors, further forward as well as back behind you um and we can have 
Our first fight. Right. Turn that down. Turn that down. Right. Take that. So it's going to be Rap and Tolkis for the first round. Got to 24 for initiative. Exactly okay. the same roll as my perception roll earlier. You got 24. Okay. A non natural 20 for you, Lena. Uh, we're going to come back to you in the next round, so oh, okay, okay. we'll do uh, Tolkis and Rup first. I'm going to see where my plus for initiative is. It's perception, you use that. You just use perception. Yeah, yeah, just perception, unless the DM says it's something else, because occasionally it's something else. This question was... Uh... Oh, uh, 19. Okay. Okay, Tolkis, you're up first. Um, as a free action, I say, you are one ugly son of a bitch. <laughs> and then and you I'll see, attack you. So if you can see the picture now on, on, on Twitch, oh, yeah, right? I haven't done it for you. You see now, um, almost like the vampires from Blade 2, with that extended jaw, after you make oh, your, nice. your little quip, it then goes, <sighs> and the whole jaw extends, and the tongue starts coming out and lashing around. Right, I am going to attempt an, a power attack on him. Go ahead. And that hits an armor class of... I don't know why I'm looking. It's bloody... It's a, yeah, that hits an armor class of 20. Yep. Total. It's a 10 on the dice and I get plus 10 to hit. Go for it. Power attack is... Five. That's 12 damage. Nice. And for my third action, because the power attack is two actions, yep. for my third action, I will raise my shield. Okay. Which well gives done. me a plus two bonus to armor class. Armor class, yeah. I forgot to mention, I always forget to mention, but everyone starts with one hero point. Okay, so just make it a Joe, a Ryan, just make a note of that. It's just, um, you know, you can re roll any failed roll that you like, basically. You can have a maximum of three. But they don't carry on into the next sessions. So you always start with one. Okay. okay. Uh, Rup, you're up. Um, can I tell whether he's an undead? Or do I not have that sort of knowledge? He doesn't look well, Rup. <laughs> <laughs> um, take a Take apart. Uh, yeah, I'll cast Disrupt Undead. Um, okay. Um, do you need to roll to hit for that as well, still? So spells. Oh, look. Uh, spell attack roll plus 8. So I'm sure uh, 15 plus 8 is 23. Oh, one sec. Oh, yeah. 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 Maths. Yeah. Jimmy? Yeah. Just. Uh, just yeah, so something. look. 23 to hit and do a yeah. 1d6 plus spellcasting ability modifier, which is. The target must make a fortitude save. Ah, yes. The target must attempt to make a basic fortitude save. If the creature critically fails to save, it also is enfeebled for one round. Yeah. I got 23. Uh, but you. Do you still take the damage? Yes. Uh, it's 1d6 plus my spellcasting ability modifier. Uh, is that the plus 8? Probably. Uh, so 10 points of damage? Yep. I'm just double checking something. Yep, I'll allow that. Okay, so is that how much damage? A 10. Okay. And now it's. Can I call out to the others in case? Oh, I'm assuming they've heard us because. Uh, they, the they've, heard, they've, they've heard the scream, yeah. Uh, right. So, uh, this is called a Sin Spawn. And it uh, takes a swipe at you, Jeff, with its claws. Um, and it gets one attack, but that is a 23 as well. Right, that hits, so as a reaction, yep. 
Yep. I'm going to do shield block. Yep. And I'll tell you what that does when you roll damage. That is eight points of damage in total. Right, so the shield absorbs five points of damage, just negates okay. it. Yep. And then the rest of the damage is split between me and the shield's hit, hit points. So what was okay. it, eight? Yep. So, you so it'd be three. Three so left over. Can't really do one and a half, so um, I'll tell you what, the shield will take two and I'll take one. Yep, that's fine. It's just so your your shield can take damage over time. Yeah, I just got to remember to mark it off because if it gets to zero yeah. hit points, it gets buggered. Just stick it on your stick it on your notes. Yes, yeah, right, got it. Um, and he's going to make a second attack, and that is uh, twenty-five. Yeah, that one hits. And that is three points of damage. That was, right, that that's was poor. That was, that's cool. That that's good. on me because I don't think you can do shield block more than once. Your reaction, so yeah, yeah, it's a reaction. You only get one, don't you? Per I think so, thing, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's cool. Okay, so uh, that that's the end of the first round. Second round, everyone else can now join in and roll initiative. You hear the scream and you hear um, the sounds of combat coming from this chamber. The kidney bomb, it's the only thing that seems to stop Harrison from talking. <laughs> is, that, is that him that's making that sound I can hear in the background? <laughs> Yes. Harrison <laughs> cool. or the Sinsman? No, 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 I meant, I meant the thing, yeah, the, the monster. Um, so Elaine's got 20. Elaine's got 20. Harrison rolled a 19 <laughs> plus 7, so that's 26. Okay, Harrison, yep. Yep. Elias? Uh, Zamba. Yep, and Zamba. 6. 6? Six. Yeah. Um, Big 6. Oh. Okay. I'm too distracted and... thinking about everything else. Yeah. <laughs> Again, that's Harrison. He he does that to people. Yeah. I was uh, distracting his, Zamba with my stories. You're muted. Don't muted on Zoom. Muted on Zoom, Steve. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. I'm gonna put you. Um, Tonkus, can you remember your? It was twenty-four as well. Okay, so I'm going to put Elias after Tolkus. Okay, Harrison, you're first. What do you wish to do? You've been rudely interrupted. Uh, re yeah, regaining so your stories of conquest. I hear the um, the loud screams and, and clashing of shields and... and, and uh, the. I mean, uh, uh, Joe, um, in, in your description, what does the uh, disrupt dead, set undead sound like? Into, what would you describe it as it sounding like? Uh, it says a lance is tar uh, shoots out this uh, target with energy, so it would probably be quite a loud, crackling, okay. sort of booming sound, I suppose. So, uh, Harrison is going to be interrupted and uh, basically start shaking uncontrollably uh, even more uh, because he's worried about where he is. But he's going to shake, his, uh, shake himself off um, and uh, try and run towards the uh, danger. Um, so how far am I, I'm, how far am I away from where should they we, are? Should we bring up the first uh, battle map? Are you locked and loaded, Steve? I can see it. I, I can see it, see it as well. Yeah. Okay. The audience so. can't. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm about. I'm, I'm quite far away actually. Well, there's squares on there. Are they five or ten? They're five. Wow. I've got an overlay on my screen. Yeah. Anyway, let's get rid of that one. You're about 35, 40 feet away, roughly, give or take. Okay, so I'm gonna. Uh... Don't forget, you've got three actions. Nearly did four there. Three actions. Yeah. So you, uh... you can move twice. Okay, fine. All right. Well, that's that's good. I was expecting a different rule set. Uh, so that means I can get up to the creature. Um, and you got one and, action left. And I've got one action, which I think can be a, a, an attack. It can. Good ho. Uh, so I will your first attack. It's no minuses. Excellent. Thank you, Jeff. I will. Um, so t uh, Harrison uh, with his uh, rapier drawn. 
and uh, even though he's 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 quite, you know, he, he he is still quite disturbed, especially seeing this massive creature in front of him, um, and obviously uh, being in a in a narrow corridor. It's it's not a massive creature. It's probably the same shape and body size as you are. Oh, sorry, I say massive, horrible creature then. Um, and, Brother, uh, yeah. let's talk about <laughs> stabbing. I'm, I'm describing, <laughs> I'm telling the story. Um, so I will, uh, I will, I will strike forward and uh, and poke him, attempt to poke him in the face with uh, my rapier. You always um, go for the face, well done. And uh, that is a um, three plus eight, so uh, 11. Eleven to hit. Correct. Yeah. Right. Okay. You miss. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> well that damage then. I'm I'm still quite I'm still quite scared uh, of uh, and still nervous. So it, it aims okay. a bit off. So. Right. Tolkus, you're it. up. Okay, I will power attack him again. Go for I'm it. going to split you a new ass now, creature. <laughs> and that is a ten again, plus ten. So that's twenty again. Unnatural. Twenty to hit. Yep. Yeah. And it's uh, twelve damage total. Nice. Yeah. Good job, brother. And because um, that counts as two actions, because power attack counts as two. So for my last action, I'll again raise my shield. Okay, you kill him with the first strike. Oh, okay. How do you wish? Well, to kill technically, him? it was one strike. Yeah. <laughs> it just does two damage dice. Um, yeah, so well, I split him a new arsehole in his head. <laughs> <laughs> now you'll have one either end. Okay. I thought that was actually going to last longer. That's why I put everyone in. I was like, oh, okay. You did kill him on the first go. I can right. dish out quite a lot of damage. Just taking it that might become a problem. That's why I have a shield as well. I, I showed you where to hit him, Tolkis. <laughs> Don't worry, brother, in the next one you will get. Yeah, I softened him up for you. <laughs> Rob, I am very proud of you. Yes, I heard that the the, uh, the, the crash sounded like some magical uh, force. Yeah, he, did, he didn't like it. <laughs> Pointy Elaine. sparkly thing came out, went bang, it was good. Elaine is going to saunter in at some point. <laughs> Well, she probably isn't sauntering. She's probably going to rush in, see um, Tolkas standing over yet another dead body, <laughs> and stop. So, all good here? Yolena, you've missed the fun. We killed him. Well, I say we. I meant Tolkas. <laughs> uh... Brother, you... I told you, next one is for you. <laughs> um, Rupp will turn to... Zambala and be like, is this one of the things you you were looking for? Uh, is it? <laughs> you it's might have not, trouble telling. His head not, is split in half. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what you were expecting, no. Yeah. Can uh, we uh, search? I don't search think around? so. Sorry, yeah. Brian. It's okay. I, it, I, I don't think so, but did Tolkien, did you do that? It looks like he's got a butt on his head now. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, incredible. It's my handy work. It, it's it? a good thing you're with these guys. You're pretty strong. Going to coin a phrase. He is now a butthead. Oh, that's a good one. That's, <laughs> yeah, I got a phrase myself. What? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I I'm gonna come up with it eventually. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we call well, Tolkis the surgeon. Oh, that's Do we? Good. I thought it was the goblin cleaver. It yes, was a well, goblin many cleaver. Names. <laughs> and now I am a cleaver of whatever this thing is. Um, uh, it, I, I shout out to Elias. Um, Elias, Elias. My kingdom for Elias. Yes, yes, Harrison. <laughs> Harrison, uh, how, how, how may I assist you? I, I don't suppose you, you, you may recognize this in your teachings, this type of creature. Uh, well, uh... Uh, let, let me take a look. I'll, I'll um, see if there's any markings on the body. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a good once over in a search. Uh, see if yeah. any of the uh, anatomical um, uniqueness indicates what sort of creature it might be. And as he gets like close to it, I want to be like, um, just be careful, okay? I've seen some dead things come back to life really quick. So, you know, 
Make sure you give it a one, two, buckle my shoe before you get to it, you know? <laughs> you mean double tap? The double tap, that's the one, that's right. I'm yeah. in agreement. So I'll always... take its head clean off. Yeah. It's split in half head now, come to They always come back for one last scare. Right. Can we, we uh, search the rest of the room? There's nothing in the room at all. There's no items, it's just a dirt uh, shaped cave room. It's, come, it's probably some kind of uh, natural cave. Mm, this is very strange. I was expecting goblins, not uh, butt headed things. Yeah, what, what is that thing? Never seen anything like that before. Uh, it's dead. It's a dead it, thing. That is the important <laughs> part of it. It is dead. I get is the there feeling it works very well. <laughs> is there any drawings in the journal that you have of this thing? Oh, good, 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 good point. Question. I will. Uh, I'll flick through the journal and see if there are any um, any sketches that look the same. Very good idea. Uh, Zamba, you get a hero point for that. Well done. Woo so now you have two hero points. Um, but sadly, no, you don't find anything uh, sketched out in a journal. Again, most of them is about uh, Nuala. I think we should be prepared for more of these things, maybe even in the next alcove. Mm. I, 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 I crack out the metal flute in my uh, backpack and just randomly play a, a tune. Harrison, does, it you of, not the time. does it remind you of your time at band camp? <laughs> Harrison, uh, I can't stress enough, now is not the time to pick up playing the flute. Wait till later. So he, he, go, he, goes to, he goes to blow the, the flute, and Elaine's just like, no, not the time. <laughs> Yank it out of yeah. his hand. I was thinking of a new tune for the uh, Tolkus killing tune. We'll write it down and do it later. <laughs> Right. Uh, seeing as this is it, this is you know a, a Thessalonian structure potentially, um, is there any law in Thessalonian history that I've uh, studied about creatures of, of this type? Good no. Well, it's worth um, trying. It's good. No, I I I have no idea what this could be. It doesn't look very um, welcoming. Um, what was it, it doing was when you entered the room? It was uh, on its knees facing the wall. I thought it was some kind of priest or something, you know. Well, it, it, it clearly shows a, a lack of intelligence then. And um, when there's no bed or anything like this in this room, it seems very sparse. So maybe the creature has been uh, released from somewhere else. Um, maybe. Maybe some maybe. sort of mindless servant, maybe. Anyway, let's keep our enough eyes speculation. Open. Let's uh, let's move on, shall we? Let's go. Yeah. Okay, same marching order as before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Rup, are you going on top of his shoulders again? Uh, I don't think that's needed now. No, I think yeah, just in front yeah. slightly. You can just okay. stay in front he, of me slightly. Yeah, you can probably just step over me anyway if he needs to. Yeah. So you go no, back into the main. The torch down. Yeah. You go back into <laughs> don't the main. Don't want to roast my chestnuts. <laughs> Back into the main corridor, and you can see more of the curve now and what goes up. So you've got the second entry on the right, which is an open alcove entry, um, going down into a corridor. Oh, if I you see follow it. the corridor around on a bend, it seems to there seems to be an, a, a, a third entryway on the right-hand side, and the corridor seems to carry on around the bend. Should we check out the second alcove first? Yeah, I think so. Mm. Make sure there's nothing. Uh, there's nothing Arleton, maybe you want to go in first this time. Uh, it's uh, your okay. chance. Okay. Um, I, I will. Uh, I will. I will head head in front, uh, very cautiously. I'll stick close to him, um, and just uh, aim my torch forwards into the into the, ca uh, the the hole the area. See if I can see any further in. Uh, yep. Yeah, the uh, the torch lights up. The, the corridor ahead and you can see straight away it's almost like the the earthen floor and the rock and everything around you uh breaks maybe you know a wall was broken down but there is a room there is a floor tiled room at the end of this corridor oh so not in the alcove not in the alcove it's a corridor you could only see so much all you saw was the entryway 
Yeah, can we... as you've gone in oh, there. That's uh, the... oh, yeah, sorry, I'm I'm putting the torch into the alcove to see what's in in the yes, second alcove. That's it's not an alcove; it's a corridor. All you saw oh, was the oh, opening. Oh, it's another. I see. Oh uh, right, okay. okay. So it's just a corridor, you say? It's a corridor. It ends at a room. Right, okay. Which is so... has floor tiles and Ooh. construction. Okay. It's your core, brother. Uh, I'm going to uh, to head in. Okay. So you you it's only about sort of ten foot, fifty foot ahead, but you walk in to uh, trap and die. Well, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> what the um, you, it's what perception rolls are for. Um, yeah. You walk in what appears to be an old storeroom. The original purpose of the of this chamber is probably unclear. But there are large mounds of rubble lie strewn on the floor. The wall to the west has been torn down to reveal a, a, a tunnel leading to the west. So that's where you've come from. So whatever was um, in this room made this hole that you were coming into the room from. On the left hand wall there is a doorway. Or well, a door, sorry, not a doorway. Uh, I head back to the group and, and tell them that it looks fairly safe for now. I, I was no right on your shoulder anyway. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'll, I'll head back to the rest of the group and um, and just say that maybe we should uh, all go as a group rather than me go any f uh, us go any further, me and Tolkus. It, it looks like a possible basement. It could and? be that we've come round enough that we are actually under another part of the town. Should we check it out? Well, if it, if it looks like tiled floors, this would indicate uh, maybe an older structure. So, you know, these uh, uh, caverns or catacombs, um, you know, this might have been part of the old smuggling tunnels that uh, were written about on the, on the note. But this, this appears to be an older structure, so maybe these are the Thessalonian ruins proper, and this may be where the creature would come from. Can I can I use my society to potentially detect if the the, the tile work and the general area how how old it looks? Uh, no, you you just have to do a proper history check. Okay, I don't. It, actually it have looks history. old from even just from observation. It is old. Okay, as in probably older than the basement that we were in from underneath the. Yes. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. The it's it's factor. it's very very old. Um, looking around, the rubble appears to be um, old kind of pottery containers, that kind of thing. Does it look like anything that I've been studying? No. Is there anything in the pots at all? No, there's nothing left. They're all broken, dilapidated. Some, some of them just look like they've crumbled where yeah. they were sitting. You said there was a doorway? Yes. There is a doorway, yeah. Uh, but there's no door, it's just an empty doorway. No, it's a, there's a door in the doorway. There's a right, door. Right, okay. So, uh, <laughs> there Harrison, a handle on the door. <laughs> Harrison will go up to the door and uh, attempt to open the door. Tolkus okay. will stand back. Um, <laughs> the door opens. And on the other side is uh, a corridor that sharply turns to the left. Okay. Um... Did the other corridor end, the one that we came from, the main one? No, that carried on round a bend. This so, is the second turning off of the, the main curve, the main bit. Oh, okay, so it might lead back to the main corridor. Now, uh, where, where are the rest of the group at this stage? I mean, is it, are me and Tolka's just having a merry adventure on our I own? I think we probably yeah. moved up. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure they came up behind us when they heard us chatting away. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, uh, staying, staying with you guys. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, so uh, we'll yes, yeah, so, so I'll, I will be aiming my torch forward and just checking for any any potential. Well, I'll be checking for traps, but you know, just general kind of oddities mm -hmm. in the you know where I'm walking and stuff. So I'll, I can do a perception if that's what you want me to do. Yes, please. So it's fourteen in total. Okay. What what exactly are you looking for? Listen um, to landmines. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, I'm just doing a general kind of sweep with the torch and just sort of, you know, just looking at any, aside from anything, basically stones that look fairly different from the other rest of the stones um, or anything that potentially looks like it may be like a, a something, you know, just a general kind of you know, 
something that I could fall into or something. Just or step on and activate. So yeah, the the, cor the cor you open the door and it's a pitch pitch black corridor. Yeah. But it's much nicer than where you've been. This is uh, has been man made constructed. Okay. So you walk in, you go forward about fifteen foot before it takes a sharp turn to the left. You can carry on down that corridor for about thirty feet before it takes a sharp turn to the right. From that point of view, you can see the corridor will open up into a slightly bigger room. There seems to be a statue from just from the shadows and from the light from your torch. However, just in front of you to the right is another corridor. Okay. Should we check um, out the room with the statue first? Yeah, so I'm going to head up towards the, um, the statue. Are you sticking together. Yeah, me and Tolkus. Uh, no, all of us. Oh all yeah, well, us. yeah. We're um, all we're all going round and. Does it look like there's been much foot traffic in this area, or does it look just like it's been forgotten? Um, you do. You notice that there are um, there are certainly footprints. They seem to be um, much smaller. Okay. Some oh. are barefoot, three toed. <laughs> Some are booted. Can but I? There does seem to be some traffic. Yeah. Can mm. I roll a perception to see if I think that they might look like the goblin footprints that we've already seen? Mm. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the, oh no, I'm nearly. Uh, Twenty-one total. Fourteen plus six. Um, so nearly, because it was nearly on the twenty. There are certainly. They certainly could be. There, there definitely seem to be uh, three-toed and like a back heel toe, not not human shaped or humanoid shaped. But then again, you kind of look over at the Zumba and go. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, could they possibly be like? Well, I point I point them out, Zumba. Do you think these footprints could be from another of your race or your ancestry? Uh, they don't like cat feet, right? No. Ooh. I smell uh, goblins on the air. I lift up my my padded foot and I say, "No, I I don't think so. I I don't have one of the back ones like that." Okay, thank you. Cool. Oh, any time, if you want, if you'd like to look at my feet any time, that's just totally cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I must apologize. I am not a foot person. <laughs> me neither. It totally freaks me out. But if, if I won't yuck any yums, you know. <laughs> So, so uh, Harrison walks over to the the statue with his mm. torch and just kind of does the Indiana Jones type thing with the the torch over the the statue. The Indiana Jones type thing, yeah. right? Snake. So why did it have to be snake? <laughs> you go, you know, you go into this room. This room is um, not quite circular, but that kind of shape. Um, and in the middle of the room, there is a large red marble statue. It's a, you, you'll like this Harrison, it's a strikingly beautiful, but at the same time monstrously, monstrously enraged human woman stands in the middle of the room. Her stony expression is twisted in that of a look of complete fury. The woman wears flowing robes and her long hair is held back from her face and an intricate headdress of hooks and blades. In her left hand, she carries a large book, the face of which is inscribed with what looks to be like a seven-pointed star. And in her right hand, she's holding a glittering metal and a uh, long ivory ransour. Is there any writing? There's no writing, but I it's would say from your, from your learnings, you this is the best depictation you have ever seen you've only seen kind of scrawlings and scratchings in various books which may have survived the manuscripts from um Thessalonian times which is literally sort of 10,000 years ago this is a statue that is in remarkably good condition of what you believe to be the past rune lord rune lord Alasnist. Uh, Zampa, do you do you recognize this person? Oh yeah, of course. Everybody knows her. She's uh, one of the 
one of the big ones, you know, the the bigger, higher ups that you know. Um, you don't I... know. No, no. Do, Wait, does oh, Harrison sorry, know? When, with, does Elias? We're not as clever. Sorry. Would you mind? That, that's oh. a sahedron. That seven-pointed star is a sahedron, and uh, I'll, I'll take my coat off. Oh. And then my shirt. Ooh. And uh, turn around and show everybody the scar that I have in my bag, which is a crudely formed rendition of the Sahedrin. Uh, this uh, this thing I have in my bag, this scar, um, I got it as a child. I, I fell down the well that's located behind the ruined lighthouse. The one you mentioned before. Yes, it, it, it nearly killed me. And... Um, well, I was left with this. Um, this is what's always driven my obsession to find out what it is. I, I know it's a sihedron, but, well, the Thessalonian um, nation, well, it disappeared 10,000 years ago, and, and there is not a lot of uh, information that's still intact. And, and this piece is, well, it's awesome. It, it's almost untouched. For something to have survived in that clarity for so long, and undiscovered down here under you know humble sandpoint is well, it, it, it's amazing. It really is amazing. Well, if there's other people that have been down here, I don't think it's undiscovered. You know. Does it look like it's been maintained? You know, it as does. Closer, and... closer inspection. Um, yes, there's not. There's not any dust on it. Somebody um, has been looking after this statue. I would like to detect magic. Mm -hmm. Is there uh, anything in particular you, you're looking at? I just wanted to see if this was giving off any sort of magical vibes or if it's got like any sort of elements to it. Like if we were to like touch it or something, if there's... Mm -hmm. There is... The statue is, is not magical in any way. Okay. However, the particular items on each of the individuals from the party around you sort of ping, and you can kind of clearly see the items they're carrying. Okay. Did you say the book's open, or is it shut? She's just carrying a book. And it's um, right in her hand. Yep. Yeah. And on the, on the yeah, cover on the of it is a, is a star. What, what did you say this was, a room lord? And what did you say her name was? Uh, what was her name again? Elasnes. 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 Okay. Where is that? I don't, I don't know if I know if I'm that? spelling <laughs> these characters. Well, what can you tell us about Elasnes? I can tell you she has one hand in her pocket. <laughs> Elasnes. One hand in a taxi cab. <laughs> yeah. No, the other one's holding a long sword. <laughs> Um, from the by... from surviving texts from the Thessalonian era, it is believed that there were various rune lords who ruled the lands. Um, and rune lord Alasnes was believed to be um, the rune lord of Wrath. Hence the statue. Looks like looking angry. Correct. And I tell them that. Okay. Well, if she's really not a wrath, that'll explain, you know, mm. why she looks so pissed off. Is there, is, there anything, happy. is there anything else in this room, or is it just the statue? No, there is a um, there's a door to the north. There is a corridor to the left, or an opening into the urban corridor, which you believe to be one of the, you know, takes you into the main curvy corner. And you came up from the south, there's a... Um, a corridor to the east, which goes down um, some stairs, basically. From as much as you can see with the torches you've got. Yeah. Can I investigate yeah. the door that's opposite yep. us in the north? The door, and it's made of door stuff. Yes, it's very dory. Uh, what type of wood is that door? Tree wood. Definitely. Mm -hmm. It's not. You believe it to be a mixture of stone and metal. Oh. 
it's a very the special very, tree that it comes from. It's a very, very <laughs> old and petrified tree. <laughs> what does investigation come from? Um, I think that'd be perception. You, you'd be in, everything's perception. Okay, cool. Uh, so that'd be a 11. Okay, you don't hear anything. Do you have a handle on it? It does. Um, I'll open it. I was going to say Harrison, step up. <laughs> <laughs> so you like open. Yeah. I'll stand behind Rup. Okay. So you open the, the room. What appears to be, um, you you open the room and kind of step in. And there's a series of floorboards in front of you. So this is a a large chamber which is. Um, a series of floorboards, and then it seems to be a bridge. And then you realize that there is a chamber below this one. There's a level below you. And you um, you realize that this is obviously once a prison. There are at least 20 cells that lie in the room's perimeter, all in the chamber below you. You're on some kind of rickety wooden platform, which overlooks the room. We have two flights of stairs descending to the prison floor, 10 feet below. Um, that's on either side of you, so to the left and to the right, there's a flight of stairs going down. The five foot wide wooden walkway runs from the northeastern edge, uh, sort of northern edge of the platform, to a passageway to the east. So it kind of go, juts into the room and then takes you east across the room into another corridor. So you're literally standing on a rickety bridge, a rickety platform, almost like scaffolding above these prison cells below you. Can we see into the prison cells? Or? Yeah, I mean, you can, you'd can. you have to have a proper look, get to the edge sure. of the stuff and have a look. Um, but yeah, you can see kind of various um, long lost prisoners are still chained and shackled to the wall. They are long since uh, turned to skeletons. Some, you know, their skulls have sort of rolled over. Uh, but you do notice there is a pile of skulls in one corner. Did, are any of the cells open? Or are we going to have to go down there to actually you, look? You're going to have to kind of... Um, do we go down? Have a look. Do we reckon yes. the stairs in the other bit went down to the same place, but just from a different angle? Yeah, I reckon that the main room that we were in before with the statue goes down and in, in on both sides, I think. It's a guess. Well, if you're going to go in, just be careful. If, if there's going to be some dead things here, you never know if they're going to come to life. Maybe you can hit them, bash them with your your shield and, and make them butt heads too like you did the other thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> Start a trend. <laughs> Right, should we um, should we take a look down, go down the stairs, then and look at the cells more closely? Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, head down. You want to take torch. point, Harrison? Yep, yeah, Harrison's mm -hmm. gonna Harrison's gonna just get this over and done with. Yelena would have marked on the way into the room with the statue where they've come, and then she's gonna mark again on the wall before they go down. Okay, okay. So you've got two flights of stairs that go down. You've got left side. You've got right side take the one that doesn't look like it's going to collapse. You can do a perception check if you wish. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nine. Fifteen total. 17. Yeah, you, you're, 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 on, you're, on, you're on the verge. You're not quite decided. There's a couple of steps missing, but it could be well, short enough. Well, following... I'll follow Harrison anyway, so he can make the decision. <laughs> uh, I was rolling, and I rolled a 17. Is that left or is that right? <laughs> Tolka has decided, look, they, look, they both look the same to me. Both look about the same to me, brother. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm heading towards the right left. side. Yeah. Steve, Steve's using the uh, always go left. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going the opposite way and, and heading down the right hand side. <laughs> so, so Harrison's gone right. Tolkus, you're following. 
I will follow him. Okay, Tolkus, right, Rup. I'll wait until he gets down the stairs before I start descending. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll see them both sort of going down there, and um, and I'll trot down, trot along after him as well. Okay, so Tolkus, you're just trotting behind. Okay, so it's Harrison, Tolkus, Rup. I've gone down the right hand side. Who's going down the left, or is everyone going down the right? I think I'd go down the right as well, just to kind of stick together. Okay. Yelena. This, this is when you find out who your friends are. No, <laughs> no, no. I didn't have a choice. I was already following Harrison. That's... Zamba and Elias, you're the last two at the top. Oh, yeah, um, I've, I've gone professor. down the left. I've gone down the left. <laughs> yeah, the the professor seems to be the one that sticks out to me the most. Uh, so I think I stay with him. Okay, so two are gone and the every, left. And everyone, yeah, everyone else went the other way. So he's going to need some backup on the left side too. So. Okay, right. So you, you all reach the bottom of the stairs and uh, straight away you, uh, you, you're milling around, you're looking in the, the various kind of prison cells that you can see and you notice there are more bones, there are scattered pieces of leather, there's obviously been chewed and there's been rats and stuff in there um, and then you hear the screech, just like you heard in the kidney cave back where you were. The same screech, but this one's coming above you. So Harrison, Rupp, Yelena, and Tolkus, you immediately look up, and on this the wooden bridge, which is walking off into the next corridor, you see another sim spawn. He's hanging up upside down under this bridge, looking down. His tongue is hanging out. His jaw is descended, and he kind of drops right in front of you. Harrison, you were first with Tolkus next to you. Okay. And um, on the left hand side. Elias went down the stairs first uh, with Zumba, uh, Zumba, Zamba, <laughs> um, and you also hear the scream. And just to the right of you, you see um, this Sinspawn again hiding under this planked bridge, drop down but face you. He's about 10, 15 foot away. Okay, so you're off in the left-hand corner. The Sinspawn is more in the sort of the middle of the room there. So which we'll quickly switch to the other camera. There we go. And everyone can roll initiative. Initiative! Including me. Bad. Not oh, terrible. Amazing. Unnatural 20. Yeah. Oh, I brother, also, we're I rolling the same. <laughs> I also 20. have an unnatural 20. Uh, Zamba 20. Yep. Uh, Tolkus. Um, unnatural 20, it's 14 plus 6. Uh, it's upside down and back to front. Who's upside down and back to front? Uh, the map is. No, it looks okay. Oh, cool. okay. You went down on the right hand side. They went down on the left. Okay. Yeah. It's just the text is oh hello. Uh, hello. Oh, still okay. Hello. okay. Oh, your there text we go. Is right. Right. I okay. was I was being too hasty. <laughs> uh Yelena, what was your initiative? Uh nineteen. Okay. Are Going the blue up. patches just like water? It, it's decoration, yes. Oh yeah. Okay. Rup. Twenty seven. Nice. Twenty seven. Right. Is it, is it green coloured? Because that might be Harrison in a bit. So. Who are we missing? No. Elias. Elias? At uh, 10 for me, sorry. Another piece of card. Always handy having pieces of card, just in case. Okay, so we've got uh, Rupp is up first. And in any order, we've got the 20s. We've got Tolkus, Zamba, Harrison, Yelena, then the Sinspawn, and then finally Elias. Okay, Rupp, you are up first, followed by Tolkus. Can I see S2 from where I am? Or do I need to move like square forward? 
Uh, where are you? Uh, can you see S2, did you say? Yes. Um, I'm going to say no. I think you would have looked at S1 first. Unfortunately, you know, we've got the bridge there, but you would, you're under the bridge. Um, so this combat takes place under the bridge. But yeah, I think you've got Harrison and Tolkus in your way, potentially Elena as well. So, so since point move, number if, two is off around the corner. Okay, so if I moved one to go forward, I still wouldn't be able to see him? Yeah, if you want to, yeah. Yeah, all right, I'll take a step forward and I'll, um, I'll throw up my coin and uh, shoot him with the uh, Disrupt on Dead as well. So another okay. bolt of like green lancing energy shoots out. It's going to lance his boil. Yeah. Let's try and uh, make that bigger for everyone. Seventeen. And you're trying to get S two or S one and S two. Um, I think it can it can only hit one character. I think it's just. It's a target. It's one target. One target, yeah. So I'm going for S two because I'm thinking that one's got th a couple of people around it. They'll they'll deal with that one. Okay. The so one and two. Or not. Um, and I do. Uh, 14 damage. Nice. Um, nice. Good stuff. You need, you need to make a fortitude save. Yep. And that is a 14. What was the save? What was the DC? Is, your, um, is it your class DC, isn't it? I think. Is that right? Someone correct me if not. Uh, um, spell spell DC eighteen. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. yeah we go over that. That's fine. That's fourteen. That's uh, a fail. So what happens? Uh, he's in enfeebled for one round. Okay. Enfeebled one for, for one round. Enfeebled. Oh, now we gotta look yeah. up what enfeebled means. Right, no, I've got it. I'm going last. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a stre it's strength roll attacks. So he's down by one. It affects your strength. Reduce it by one. Right. Um, anything else you'd like to do? You've moved uh, forward. You've done your attack. Uh, I will move back to was the square that, again. Was that two? Was that two actions to? Uh, 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 what that spell? Been? Yeah. I don't uh, think it would have been. Dead. Uh, yeah. Um, it's two actions. It says. Okay. So you're done. So yeah. Right, okay, oh. Tolkus, followed by Zamba. Right, I shall um, move in front of S1 and then clonk him. Okay, so you're going to head up. Actually, do I need to move or can I hit him from that square? You can, you can hit him from there. He's jumped down oh, right in front in of case, Harrison and you're standing next to Harrison. Because of uh, action economy, I'll stay where I am and hit him, hopefully. Do mm -hmm. power attack again. Go for it. And that hits an armor class of 17. Yes. Oh, no. Missed. No? Missed. Okay. Ooh. And then for my last action, I will raise my shield again. Okay, so you pull up the shield and block it. Okay, Zamba, you're up, followed by Harrison. Okay. Um, so, I would Zamba, you can see uh, S2 drop down from the, the wooden walkway. Yep. Um, I would like to uh, I'd like to uh, quickly pat Elias on the shoulder and say, well, uh, <laughs> good luck, huh? you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> and then cast Guidance on him. Yeah. Uh, I believe that's one action. And then yeah. I would like to cast, I think, Heal on S2. Okay. Uh, because if it is a undead, it has to make a fortitude save. Mm -hmm. uh, 17. Okay, I got a. With a burn, I got 29. Ooh, 29. So, 29. You get plus <laughs> 10 fortitude. Bet. So. That's got to be wrong. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. I'm trying to see. 
So I think it still does damage. So I think it still does five. Yeah, it would do the minimum. Yeah, it's a, it's a success check. So it has to do half damage. Okay. Um... So do do half half a heal. Well, roll, roll your damage. Uh, roll your healing. Uh, I rolled five. So five. that's fine. We'll do it as three. Okay. And that's on number two. Yep. Okay. Harrison, you're up. Followed by Yelena. Um. So I will attempt to bond Mott, which uh, is a. a uh, uh, an insightful quip at a foe distracting them uh, and my uh, quip will be i would contact your mother about your death but uh, don't speak horrible language and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah that would be my bon mot uh, so I, uh, I i roll a diplomacy check against your target's will dc so i rolled uh, 11 plus 6 so 17. go on in you have to Oh. Uh, seven. Okay, so uh, so success. Uh, you get a Ten minus seven. two on uh, perception and will saves. Okay. And, uh, and and as that part of success, I I gain uh, panache uh, due to the using my bond mot successfully. Okay. Um. So. As that, I will use my uh, precise strike, um, which means I strike with flare, uh, I, with the agile or finesse melee weapon. I, I deal two additional precision damage. So uh, I will so roll damage. So I'm attacking with my rapier. I'm poking in the face again. Pokey, mm -hmm. pokey time. Um, and that is uh, seven plus. Eight is uh, fifteen to hit. Uh, yep. Uh, sorry, fifteen to hit. Yes. Missed. Um, okay. So uh, yeah, Harrison. <laughs> uh, after. After all that, misses. After after all of it, misses. Um, so I lose that. I lose the panache for that. But as my last action, I will attempt to tumble through um, the horrible demon. Um, yeah, and uh, and I I make a uh, acrobatics check against your uh, creature uh, against your reflex DC, attempting to go past him. I got a twenty-six. Okay, <laughs> so I rolled a three and uh, <laughs> athletics plus four. Yeah. So that's like yeah. we're not doing the uh, critical to. <laughs> Minus ten, isn't it? Is it? So you're trying to what? Go acrobatically dive behind him, but incredibly like, just I'm land. I'm just feet. basically just trying to like pass through him, uh, not pass through him, but like uh, pass around him uh, by just by. So I just basically just slam straight you just, into you just him. Just chest burst him. <laughs> <Yeah. clears throat> mm. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll be like, <laughs> uh, at the end of this, I'll be like, oh dear, oh dear. Okay, right. That's, That's the end of my turn. We move on. Yeah, Yelena, see if you can save the day here. Um. <laughs> I'll try. Um, Yelena's going to kind of put her staff between the two people in front of her. And she is going to cast Acid Splash at it. So a blob of acid is just going to shoot out nice. that staff. Yeah. Um, I need to make a spell attack against you. Go ahead. Uh, that's my, probably well, not going to hit. That is a uh, 15. No, misses. Nope. Nope. Um, so, no. I can't help. Okay, it's so all you, going really you do wrong. the acid splash and it just, for whatever reason you manage to miss, it goes flying past and psh, you just see it splatter on the wall behind you. Yeah, there's some like acid kind of smell and steam from behind as I've got it on the stone work okay. instead. So, my go, Sinspawn, number one, sees Harrison kind of blurt and after the chest bump goes, goes for a, a claw chest high bump. five. And, uh, ooh, that is a 23 to hit. That hits. That does, with uh, 
Uh, for it. With six points of damage as it rakes into your shoulder and gashing you across. Okay. So, uh -huh. uh, a quick question. Um, yep. I was on uh, 27 hit points the last game, and we didn't rest, did we? So no. I, yeah, but I, we leveled. So I would I would have got max hit points back. Yeah. Well, it depends yeah, okay. how. Yeah, it does depend. We're, yeah, we're, we're, we're keeping the max hit points. It's, it's keep your okay, life cool. longer that way. Cool. I can so fine. Talk All right. To you more. So I will take off seven. So yeah. Okay. So that's it. it. I've taken that damage. The second hit uh, and misses. I got a twelve. Okay. Cool. Uh, since ball number two. Um, comes bounding directly up to Elias and goes for the hit. And that is uh, a 20, Elias. Yep, that is a hit. Okay. Elias, no! Oh. That is 10 points of damage. Ouch. And then the next attack is, ooh, is 21. That's also a hit. With eight points of damage. So, ouch. <coughs> and then Elias, your go. Right. Like you've got that potion of healing. <laughs> um, I will. I will crack open that potion of healing. Yep, yep, yep. And take it. Um, now I. I haven't prepared enough to look up how much it gets you back. You can uh, do it. Oh, hold on. It does something like. It does. That tell me one and D eight hit points. Yeah. Potentially, if it's a potion, mm. normal potion one. Potion of light wounds. It's a, it's a, yeah. Light wounds. Yeah. It, oh, it says one D eight or two D eight or three D eight or six D eight, and I assume it's the lesser one. So it'd be one D eight. It's it's fine. It's a it's a healing potion. It's not a major one. Uh, so an almighty two hit points back, but yeah. better than a poke in the eye. Every yeah, second you you'll need it. <laughs> Um, so I will then go all in. Uh, I'm going to reach into one of my mini pockets in my coat. I'm going to pull out a small hanky that I'm going to wrap up around my fist. And I'm going to concentrate very hard as I cast a produce flame spell and uh, reduce the flame on the torch next to me and make it appear magically on my uh, on my fist that's wrapped in um, handkerchief. And I'm going to punch the sin spawn. Uh, so okay. I... I'm going to roll that again using my hero point. Ooh, okay. That was a one. <laughs> I think we need a new roll that you can't re roll in that one. <laughs> well, you can, you can play that next time. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> the dice have been rolled already. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's, a, that's a 16 on the dice. And. 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 and uh, plus 6 is 22. A 22 to hit, yeah, which I yes. assume hits, and yes. it takes as I punch him with my flaming fist six points of damage. Ooh. Nice, so I go, Ha, take that, but don't hit me again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it takes your hit, boom, you obviously see it do some damage, but it's like, and it looks back at you. And then again, it extends the jaws out, and you just see as it cracks the flesh open. And all you, the, the two sets of jaws are separate, but you've got these rows of teeth inside, and all the spittle and stuff is coming out. Didn't like the hit, they didn't like the hit. Okay, top of the round. Rup, followed by Tolkus. Cool. I am going to wrap this up quickly. <laughs> I know we've never break. Cast, I need a drink. <laughs> I'm gonna cast Forbidding Ward on S2 uh, for Elias, um, okay. so that gives him. Do you have um, a distance on that? Oh, that's a very good question, actually. Oh, it's just 30 feet, so no, yeah, I probably can't do that, can I? No. Not sad times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sad times. <laughs> uh, I will um, 
go for um cause the disrupt on dead. That's also thirty foot. Alright, I'm gonna um attack S two then as well. Uh with uh, disrupt on dead once more. Okay. Uh sixteen, does that hit? Six, sixteen misses. Okay. Um and that's a two attack point turn as well. So. I don't think I can do anything else other than move, can I? Um, you can uh, attack again if you've got anything that's a one action attack. Oh, I suppose I can shoot him with a ranged weapon, like an actual weapon, can't I? Go so for I it. Will, I'll it. Yeah. Uh, fire my sling at him. I don't know what's in his sling. What is it? It's like rocks or something. Bullet. Uh, so 17 plus, I'm assuming, is. Is there any plus to hit? Oh, it's minus one to hit, I think. Special? Is that right? Yeah. So you got... Okay, so 16. No, you missed. So yeah, the sling so you... ricochets off the wall as well. Cool. You threw the sling itself, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> the bullet or whatever it is. Right. Yeah, the bullet. Tolkus, you're up. Right, Tolkus is, is getting um, happier. Because this one's not as easy to split open. So he, he's going to uh, power attack him again, but this time he's going to hit, he's going to bloody hit this time. Yes, I'm pretty sure that's going to hit. It's an 11 on dice plus 10, so 21. Correct, hits. And... Fifteen damage. Oh boy. Yes, I had to count, it's late. Nice. <laughs> Nice. And uh, for my last action, because again that's two actions, so for my last action I'll raise my shield. Okay, we should go back into defence. Okay, Zamba, you're up, followed by Harrison. Uh, okay, so I want to step up um, alongside the professor here. Yeah, you um, want to go top or bottom? Up uh, on top. Okay. Right, yep. Uh, and I would like to uh, reach out my hand, and um, the professor would see like the skin color in my my fingers sort of just disappear as like my hand turns like gray almost like it's just like darkening mm -hmm. uh, as I reach out and I and I grab for the sin spawn, uh, and he needs to make a fortitude save. Okay. okay. Uh, oh, I got a natural twenty. Oh no! Oh, it's weird that fails. Um, <laughs> so I don't think anything happens because he's. Dead. It's a natural one, yeah. So he manages to shy off whatever that is you're trying to force in into him or through yeah. him. Can you use uh, the hero points? Does that count as like a reroll? Uh, uh, um. Well, technically, no, because you still had the attack. Uh, okay. But you can do if you've got one action left, unless that was a double action. Uh, well, there's two actions to cast, to cast it, and then one, make yeah. one move, so I'm, I'm good. Okay, so you, as far as you're aware, it had no effect on, on him. Yeah. On it. Uh, Harrison, you're up, followed by Elena. Okay. It's embarrassing in a while. <laughs> So, um, I believe I still have Panache because I didn't lose it after performing the precise strike. But, I will be attempting to use a confident finisher, which will lose my Panache at this at the end of this. So, um, I will need to at least attempt to hit first, so I'm hitting with my, or at least poking with my rapier. Uh, I'm going to re-roll using my hero point because that was a four. <laughs> uh, that was a nine plus eight, so seventeen. Missed. Damn. It manages to kind of just move out of your way as you lunge forward to try. It's your little pokey stick. You still can't. Okay, so uh, yeah, that was my confident finisher, which was not very confident. Not, not confident. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I will attempt uh, to um, trip the uh, opponent. Okay, go as ahead. That's my next action. Um, I think trip to E. Uh, try to knock an opponent to the ground. Attempt an athletics check against the target's reflex. So, athletics. 
Eight. <laughs> what is up with this dice? Against, against, the, tar <laughs> against the target's <laughs> reflex. Uh, I got 24. <laughs> All right, okay. So, yeah. Um, and that's... These are the Rune Lord dice. Yeah, oh, I'm going to get some of them. Yeah, I'm going I'm to swap this dice. Throw it out the window okay. immediately. So, are you out of actions? No, I. so that was uh, a, a, a attack with a confident finisher, which is um, uh, an action. Then I attempt to trip, and then my last, my last action will be attempting to tumble through. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come on, big 20 coming up now. Come on, Josh. Right, so I'm going to attempt to go behind the creature using Tumble Through. Tumble. Go ahead. Oh, for... The natural one. <laughs> now, that was a three. So okay. the, the, <laughs> that's it's a second three, isn't it? Yeah, so that's three plus four, so seven. Do you All want to use your hero point? Should I, should I be a nice DM? Do I've already you want used to it. Use it? Oh, you've already used it. <laughs> <laughs> so you tumble through. Um, he's going to make... <laughs> A, a, an attack against you because you you blatantly failed that, um, and oh, we got an eighteen. Does that, uh, does that get you? It does not. That is actually no, it does. It it if it's eighteen, it, that's actually on my AC. Okay, so he manages to hit you, and that is five points of damage as it rakes your back as you try to. You think you're definitely dodging past, uh, but you're not. He's just what you doing? Could you? Yeah, that's it. I don't, I don't know okay, going. Yelena, we gotta we gotta save the day again. <laughs> Come on, Yelena. <laughs> Yelena's gonna go. Oh, this is embarrassing. She's gonna <laughs> reach her staff out again and try and do the same thing. <laughs> and hopefully, she might hit. Maybe. As he, or you might get Harrison as he dodges past. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll give him another scar to talk about. Um, I rolled a fifteen, and it's a plus seven, so that that'll hits. be a twenty-two. That hits. Oh, that's fine. Cool. Go for it. So, uh, take six points of acid damage. Okay. Splash. splash. And there is splash damage, but... The, the splash... Yeah, that, that's okay. It's only Harris. <laughs> <laughs> the, the splash the damage, acid, I did not think this through. <laughs> the acid... Uh, he makes a swipe onto Harrison as he goes past and then looks up just as this acid blast gets him full bodily in the face, the chest, and you can see the flesh start to burn away. And he howls out in anger. You can you can see it and smell it. It's not enough to kind of put him, put him down, but he he didn't like that. And he can see his eyes lock across the room onto yours. Uh, what is the splash damage? What's the splash radius? It's one. It's one, and it's five foot. Okay. So everyone in the five foot radius. That is also going to include Tolkus as well. Unfortunately, did but not you, think this through. You both. <laughs> you That's both right, take because. One How much point was of acid it? Damage. One, one's, uh, yeah, acid. The, my shield only gate it because yeah. okay. I've got my shield raised. So, okay, I don't. Ha Harrison says, like, "Oh my back!" Oh, my <laughs> Sorry, <face."> Harrison. <laughs> I wanna elbow. I the told professor. you to get a shield, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna elbow the professor and be like, "What the heck? Good thing we're on this side. Man, collateral damage, am I right?" Yeah, 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 stick with me, you know, this is the serious side and, and yeah. that's the comedy side. Yeah, it's I was going to say. Scratch. They were talking about knowledge and stuff and we're the smart ones, I guess. Well, we'll find out at the end of this round. Yeah. <laughs> Don't speak too soon. <laughs> so, my go, since born, uh, S1 is going to attack Harrison for... I got a 23, that hits. Yeah, that hits. And that's five points of damage. He manages to uh, shake off the, the the acid splash and just kind of continues to batter into you. Um, and that is a 28. Blimey. Bloody hell. And that's eight points of damage for the second hit. Okay. Since spawn number two attacks Elias again. Uh, oh, that's a natural. I got a uh oh! Don't, don't, don't sound so happy about so, it. What's, what's it like saying so, about don't speak too soon? Yeah. <laughs> um, so these Looks are up. the Pathfinder Second Edition Critical Hit deck. So um, he managed to do a melee attack against you, and that means um, it's a slashing damage. Um, so I've got natural natural twenty critical damage. Now this says. You take normal damage 
Okay, so I don't get to do double damage or anything else. I take you take normal damage, but the target takes a minus two circumstance penalty to perception checks and charisma based checks except intimidation until you are healed. So basically with that natural twenty he manages to catch you all across the face. He rips part of your ear as it carries on through your cheek, getting the end of your nose. Your glasses come off as well. Um, so minus two. That is a good way of explaining the perception thing, Dave. I'm well impressed yeah, yeah. there. Hmm. Minus two circumstance. Uh, Could have been worse, Dave. What was the other one you got the other game? It's like <laughs> slash open or something? Constant bleed or something. Constant bleed, yeah, bleed out. They hit, you yeah. hit an artery, basically. So, this. Oh my god, I'll never do it again! Um, <laughs> so. No, can I just. Bit... You haven't rolled the damage for the attack yet. Yeah, the first one. No, it says. Oh, you take. Yeah, sorry, you take normal damage. So it is. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I love these Rune Lord dice. I, I love these. So that is, uh, six, that's 10 points of damage plus your minus 2 penalty. Now, the second roll, I attacked. Uh, I keep saying Zumba. Uh, uh, Zamba <laughs> with a natural 20. So I draw a new card. And this is also slashing. This is a crit effect. The target takes a minus 2 status penalty to perception and also ranged attack rolls until healed. So again, managed to, to claw you across the face, okay? This is worse than um, picking from the deck of many things. <laughs> it's more stressful. Yes. <laughs> I, I, do, I do like it, and you get critical fumble as well. So, but basically it's just better than saying, you know, you dropped your weapon or, oh, you, you know, you do double damage. Yeah, At least yeah. now Add there's the, a way to... That's another level to it, doesn't it? I have which, which a I, quick I question. Like. Go uh, ahead. I know that I know that crits auto hit, but if I were to use shield as a reaction, would that negate any of the you extra can, effects? You, you can only do that if you've raised your shield already. Yes. To the spell. Yeah. Oh, shield the spell. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, that's a good point. That's a reaction, that's a reaction isn't it? Yeah. 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 So would, would that yeah. like help negate the additional the the crit the thing that you, uh, that's on the card? Let Let's do it. I, I only think it yes, increases your armor class, doesn't it? Mm. I think. Well, I don't know. I know well, it does. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, he hit with a crit, so it's going to hit no matter what. I, I have a vision coming to me that Elias is looking it up. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, like, like uh, using the reaction to negate the, the permanent damage on my face. Yeah, you can still you can still get that permanent damage healed. It's just a minus two okay. and yeah, it's not permanent healed. permanent. Okay, yeah. all right. I'll allow it. Who's up next? Who's up next? Elias. <laughs> uh, Elias isn't up next because Elias is horizontal on the floor. Oh no! Elias oh, is collapsed on the floor. He goes down, clutching his face, um, with an ashen look that comes over his. Now, unconscious form. No. Doesn't he's beard. Don't worry, everybody. I, it's okay. I can stabilize him. It's okay. Don't you don't use wet it. <laughs> okay, Rup. You're up. Um. So if I cast heal, I can do it in a error effect as well, right? It says that I can uh, heal a single creature all, all in a burst. Yeah. Um. How do I? find out what the range on that it's, burst is. If it's the spell heal, it's a 30 foot animation. Okay, can I move um, three squares to the left, so just below Harrison? Uh, is that going to get in range? No, it's not. It takes three actions to do the... To do oh, okay, the so I can't move. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, in that if case... You, if you do the two action one, it's a 30 foot range. So you can still target one person in the 30 foot range. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that would work. Uh, That's okay, a good idea. So, yeah, I'll move uh, to underneath Harrison and target Elias with uh, that spell. It's a uh, 1d8 damage. Not damage. damage. Uh, Don't damage him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just looking really beaten up at this stage and I'm looking at Rupp healing uh, Elias. Alright, <laughs> 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 thinking he throws out sweets or something. Is that what his. Yeah. Uh... Oh, well. 
Why yeah, he, he loves throwing at his Werther's Originals. Uh, I'm gonna use my um, hero dice and re roll that uh, for an eight. Eight healing. Originally. Yeah. On onto onto who? The, the uh, eight. Elias. Yeah. Uh, Elias. Yeah. Yes. Oh, th th thank you, Master Rapp. I, I I don't know what came over me there. It was a th the thought of losing the beard, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> No, no worries. Hope you feel a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> Tokus, to to you're up. Right, Tokus is going to um, hit. Take a five foot step forward. <coughs> um, yeah, he's going to move underneath uh, S1 or there. That will do. Sorry. Get and then and then get. Um, what's the bonus you get again? Is it just plus one or something? So oh, well, for, for flanking, yes. Yeah, something like that, isn't it? And power attack again. Go for it. And it's that's a good roll. It's not quite double damage, so it's 19 plus 10, so it's 29 to hit. Yes. And he does. Oh, that's good. Eight and six. Which is 14. 18 damage total. Fantastic hit. How do you want to kill this one? Oh, he's going to get butt-headed again, of course. <laughs> look, look, Harrison, another butt-head. <laughs> Good job, brother. Again. And um, I've got, I've got uh, one action. No, I haven't, because I moved first. No, that's me done. Cool. Right. Zamba, followed by Harrison. Quite hard. Um, so Come if on, I were to hit with, if I were to hit with a dagger, it's just one action. Yep. Okay. So I want to I want to uh, try to stab this thing like prison shank style. Do three quick yeah. three quick yeah. 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 I like your Go style. Uh, the first one is a seven. Missed. Nine. Missed. And eleven. Missed. I throw my dagger. <laughs> <laughs> At Harrison and it hits. <laughs> hey. It's the damage magnet. No, so each hit it manages to just kind of somehow evade you. Whatever you're doing, you're not getting quite close enough. You're not getting any kind of part of it. Parts of its clothes manage to kind of get in its way. That was all three actions. Harrison, you're up, followed by Yelena. So I'm going to step uh, towards the behind the uh, creature using all of, well, as much as move. Five, seconds, 15, 20, behind. yeah. Um, and I'm going to redeem myself, hopefully, against the other creature. Um, because he's flanked, do I still I still get that? You get the uh, extra bonus, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, please, give me a good roll. Okay, that's good, 19. 19 plus hits! Eight. Yeah, well, it's 19 plus 8, so 27. 19 hits! Yeah, it doesn't matter, 19 <laughs> hits! Yeah! <laughs> yeah. Woo! So, 1d6. Go, brother. 1d6. Let's go. Full damage, six points. Woo! Any any bonuses to that? Nope. <laughs> oh no! Rem? <laughs> no. Um, and uh, I will use my last action to uh, stride to move five feet away. You you're gonna come out of combat, yeah? Yep. Okay. You tumble frame. Yeah. So your stride is just uh, a movement. It's not the same as. Um, coming out of combat. Disengage. Oh, sorry, sorry, step. Sorry, not stride. I okay. used the wrong one. Yeah. Step. I'll, 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 I'll allow that one. Okay, so, Yelena. Um, Yelena would like to move up to where Harrison was. Yep. Fire 10, and... 15, 20, 25, 30, yep. No, sorry, not where he was. What? Um, yeah, that's it. Um, Next to the Sims ball. Next to Rob. And then oh, she's going right. to... Yeah, there. Um, and then she's going to extend her staff out. Not to do acid splash this time. Um, you need to make a reflex save. Or electric okay. arc. Ooh, I got... Uh, 20 around... 3, 3, 3. Yeah, that'll save. That'll save. It just crackles to nothing. Part way there. Okay, an unsuccessful spell. 
Yeah. As it arcs off across the room, but doesn't actually go anywhere. Anything else you got? Why are these so difficult to kill? <laughs> no, that's it. I moved. That was two actions. There is a reason. You must find out. Okay, Sinspawn. Um, Elias is back up. Uh, and uh, Zomba, he didn't like that because all that stabbing, it failed. Uh, but he did get stabbed in the back. So he's going to do a bit of both. He's going to hit Elias for a lot. Uh, that's 27. And that's eight points of damage, Elias. That puts You're you back, back down, down, aren't you? You get back down. Yeah. 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 And then he's going oh, to. That's such a great finishing move as well. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's going to step back and attack Harrison, which means Yay. Zamba can get attack of opportunity. Okay. Finish uh, him. So just roll to hit as normal. Uh, with a dagger or. Which, whatever you want to do, if you want to. Can I do the chill touch cantrip or no? Uh, he's moving out. Let's say yes, actually. Let's let's say yes. Uh, okay, and then it was. I think it's just a fortitude save. Uh, I got twenty. An unnatural twenty. Oh, actually, that's not even a. It's not even a attack to hit. Uh, all right. I can, do. Do I just do the dagger then? Because it's not even. It's not even like a damaging thing whatsoever. Yep. Okay. So do, 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 do the dagger. Uh, 18? 18 hits. Yes. Cool. Uh, three points of damage. How do you want to kill this one? <laughs> <laughs> um, it turns its back on you and it heads towards Harrison. You see the arm going up and you can step up and, uh, and back it see I see him uh, knock down the professor and I just like very quickly get enraged. I'm like, what the heck? And I just like leap and like, jump on his back and just like stab him in the, in the, in his clavicle. Cool. Nice. And he goes down. <laughs> Crumple to the floor. Well done, Woo everybody. Woo -woo. I'm glad I could help. Sorry, Harrison. Sorry, Tolkas. Well done for hitting Harrison. <laughs> yes, I made a, a good hit. Elias is I... still on the floor. Let's go uh, sort the lions out. Is Brock able to heal him or Elena? Or... Uh, Elena yeah. can stabilize him. Yeah, I've got the ability to stabilize the dying creature as well. Can't heal though. And nothing will like... drop some heal. Drop some damn big heal on him. Yeah. Half uh, oh, past so 11 at the same time. I know, that time went fast. At three. And seven, so ten points. Of you, nice. You you rolled d10s for your heal. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Right. So I'm gonna cast it with two actions. So it's sixteen hit points. I heal you for. Yeah, oh. and you you get twelve more as well from me. Something like good as no. I am. <laughs> and and Harrison's like groaning at this stage. He's uh, <laughs> uh, walk it off, brother. <laughs> right, go ahead. Everyone, we are. It is half eleven. We're aiming to to finish at twelve. And if we carry on with this, it's going to take us past midnight here in the UK. So, what we're going to do? We're going to have a quick break now. So get some. We're not going to go much past midnight. Um, let's have a quick break. Let's have a quick Q&A with Ryan while we got him here. We've got some giveaways to, to sort out as well. So for players, go get a drink of water, go get a cup of tea, go do what you need to do. Toilet break. Ryan, if you need a quick break <laughs> or top up with water, <laughs> whatever, go for it. Too bad. Um, get, get a beer. <laughs> yeah, get a beer. I, I'm, I'm drinking. I don't know what this is anymore. This is all changed colour. It's like cool aid. Yeah. So, Don't drink the just to kind of uh, let's let's talk. So, Ryan, tell us a little bit about uh, why why session zero. First of all, why the name, and then how did you? When did you start it? How did you start it? Why did you start it? Uh, uh, well, session zero, as you know, we we know it's. 
it's where you start. It's 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 step one of putting anything together. Um, it wasn't taken. The name was <laughs> the name was open, so, so that was a plus. Um, but it was just it just made sense. Like I needed to start somewhere, and session zero was like the thing. Um, I started it because um, I I've grown up with like the uh, Albany New York hardcore scene. Like I used to be in a hardcore band, um, so I really liked the style of the clothing and all of the clothing that I saw out there, uh, minus like like death saves, like Joe Manganiello's death saves. Um, it was all, it was all like all not really something that I would wear. So I wanted to make something that I would wear. Um, and this shirt I'm wearing is the first design. It was simple, like simple front. There's session zero on the back. I have a couple over here. Um, but I, I, I wanted to make something, just one shirt for myself. That was it. Uh, and then my friends were like, why don't you just make more? Why don't you just do this, sell this stuff? You know, and it was really reluctant to do it but i did and now i have this clothing company with 13 designs and you know five or six different artists from literally around the world it's, mm -hmm. and i'm just meeting new people all the time like meeting you guys is awesome um but yeah it was just it was my way of taking my little piece of world and putting it out there for others who may or may not share my similar tastes or interests uh clothing wise um first and foremost so what what who who designed this one you mentioned you got various designers now because this this is so, the minotaur yep. the, the which minotaur, i absolutely love so we've got the you got the warhammer there uh, the the axe we've got the the d zero i love the d zero as well i just yeah, think it's it such a everyone you everyone uses the d20 and it's the shape. But actually, just I love the idea of just having the zero on it. it just makes yeah. perfect um, sense. I, the shirt itself was designed by my friend, my friend Jeremy. Uh, I've pretty much grown up with him. Um, I recently just uh, peer pressured him into getting a new iPad, so maybe I can get some more drawings out of him. Um, but he did that shirt, uh, and the zero on the D twenty um, was actually my friend Stephen. Uh, I just wanted the zero. I just thought the zero was cool. Um, I, like mm. on the back of this one, there's a big zero. I just, I just thought that was cool. Uh, he was like, why don't you just put it on a D20? So I did, and that's where I'm at. So we got, you also sent, so you, as, well as, as well as this one, you also sent us a couple more. So this is for, um, this is for Josh Harrison, who picked this one. This is the long sleeve. Uh, I don't know what this one's called. But uh, it's, the, it's just I, I love the artwork on that. Yeah, I was in desperate need of some long sleeve sh t shirts. So, uh, well, long, long sleeve shirts. So, so to hide all the prison tats. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That one is uh, Raven Queen inspired. Uh, that one's drawn by this guy, Lance Moyer. Uh, he's from, uh, I believe, Missouri. That is, it's really, really nice. The quality of the t shirts is good as well. Um, you know, they're not. Um, it's it's the loom. Uh, yeah, it's not what we would call. I don't know if it's fruit of the loom worldwide. I don't know. Um, and this one is, I love the artwork on this one. So Steve, who plays Elias, has ordered this one. Um, but yeah, look, it's a baby owl. Well, it's owl a baby bear. owl bear, it's isn't it? Cublet. Yeah, it's baby owl bear. Owl bear. Yeah. Yeah. So this I one's called that. the Cublet. Um, again, the, the D0 there. Yeah, Absolutely they're, they're way cool. And, and thank you for... for Sending them to us. That's much yeah, appreciated. Um, cool. Yeah. I, lo I love we, that, that, that shirt. Yeah, we had um, got a question in the chat. Um, got a question in the chat for uh, Ryan. What's your impression of Pathfinder so far? Unless that's been answered already. Uh, I like it. Um, it's it's different. Um, I There's like some things that frustrate me, like the... Uh, like critical success and critical failure with um, the regular success and regular failure when, when it comes to like uh, spell saves, uh, like difficulty checks, like how there's four tiers of it rather than just the two. Yeah. Um, and I think that that like kind of frustrates me a little bit, but it's, I definitely understand why. But other than that, 
everything's pretty easy to to you know jump over to once you you know the rules from like the the D and D like the five E set, which is pretty much all I know. But I I didn't really have much of a hard time jumping in other than um, making the character. Uh, my friend Max, I think he might be in the chat. He helped me put it together the other day. Cool. Max, um, are you in chat? Put your hand up. Make yourself known. <laughs> <laughs> that question was from Jack, hold Webb. Your piece. <laughs> Jack Webb 1205 asked that question. Thanks, Jack. So, so how, how do you how do you go about finding your artists? Um, I so I have um, what what happens is I I come up with like an idea and I'll I'll bounce it off some of my friends, um, see what I can conceptualize visually, mentally, um. And then I'll just jump on Instagram or something and search for like, um, I have the, the drider, like the, the spider shirt. I'll search for hashtag drider and see if I can find somebody who does the artwork well enough for me to be like, that's awesome. I want that. And I'll reach out to them and be like, hey, this is the style that I want. This is the idea that I have. Can you do this? And it just, Kind of turns into a, a discussion and then a design and i throw it on a shirt on photoshop and send it to my friend chuck who i think is also here unless he bailed i'm not sure Put your uh, hand I, know up, he, chuck. He, I know he would work today so he's probably eating dinner or something but yeah it's 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 a process there's a lot of a lot of moving so pieces but are you open for designers to talk to you directly to get in touch directly oh 100 percent. yeah absolutely uh, anybody that can can draw, anybody that can, whatever. Like, wh if you even have an, even an idea or something that you want to see on a shirt, message me, send it to me. I'll, I'll do my best to put it out there. It's session zero isn't mine. It's everybody's. I, I want everyone to to wear what they want to see. I I like the comparison you made with um, like like death saves. So it's very kind of uh, 80s heavy metal. They're using some of the original artwork as well. Yep. And some of, some of the stuff I like. And then some of their choices are, well, why did you go with that one? Or the, the choice of jacket or material. So, well, that seems a bit odd. Um, from even, you know, you've got a, a small range at the moment, which is continued to grow. Because we've been talking, you know, off, off stream about up and coming projects. I like what you've got. I haven't seen these designs anywhere else. And I, fact, I think the fact that you're opening up a library of uh, open to, for designers to get their work out there um, yeah. without having to set up a business or do it themselves, which can really hold people back, that you can say, look, here's a, here's a service that we are using to sell. We'll get your designs out there. Um, and I, I like that because it, uh, it also gives you more variety. And then you can have what what is working, what is popular, what is doing those, those various bits and pieces for right. do, I, do you. Do you? We've got a, a question from live chat. Is do you have a particular favorite of the shirts? Yes. Uh, uh, right now, I have one um, that it isn't out yet, uh, and it's it's sort of like a, this light obsession that I've had the past few months. It's nothing, there's no drawings, it's just the zero. But the idea that goes into it, which I can actually show you guys, uh, this is a-, a Exclusive. We, exclusive, get a scoop. Uh, this is, I was only Spoiler. gonna show off, I was only gonna show off one shirt, but I was like, screw it, I'll show off the second one too, because I don't really care, it's cool anyways. So uh, a few months ago, I watched the, the Wu-Tang TV show, the Wu-Tang Clan show, the, An American Dream. And I, I realized I didn't know much about Wu-Tang, so I got obsessed with them. And I started listening to them all the time, and I started watching documentaries and stuff. And I just, I loved the, the, the icon of their, their logo. So I made a crew neck of just the zero yeah. with nice. a D20 on it. I love the sleeve it's, as well, though. Yeah. I think it's for me, it's, it's the extra simple. details. I, I love it when you get something different across the back. And I love the, the shoulders don't, don't match. You have different things. Yeah. Um, I like those extra bits and pieces. Um, but as far as a favorite, 
goes, besides that one, that one's just like a personal, like, I'm really happy about that one. Um, as far as the favorite goes is the, the new one that we're putting out. Um, uh, my friend Dylan reached out to me um, a couple of months ago, and we've been talking since then. Uh, and he runs a group called Cantina 13. I believe yep. he's here in the chat. If he is, yes, yeah. Right? Yep. Um, they've been working on something um, that I probably can't go into details about. I'm sure they're going to release more information later, but they've been doing their own little thing. Um, and to collaborate with them on their thing, uh, we started to come up with ideas of doing a t-shirt release alongside oh, of we just design. lost someone who did we lose we just lost joe. joe joe lost joe ah so we should, we've just lost all our camera um placements so i'll be in ca carry on talking but we'll oh there he is. is he back he's back <laughs> so we're just slagging you off yeah well you have got to take a chance when you can do you know what i mean <laughs> the problems with live streaming yeah, we've we've swapped places as well. Oh, okay. um, yeah. Oh, I'm Elena. While well, 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 you sit there, while well, you sit there, we, we do have another uh, question from chat, and that was um, the question from World Space Chase is: They love uh, the Baby Albert design, but given a lot of your metal inspiration for the other shirts, what was the inspiration behind the Cublet shirt? So the couplet one was uh, actually an idea that I had about a year ago, and I just didn't know how to do it right. Um, and what I wanted was, we'll go back to death saves. They're very like 80s metal. I love their designs. I, I'm, I, I fully support it. But what I wanted to do was something that was multiple genres. I look at my, my shirts as different genres of music because not everyone listens to hardcore music. Not everyone listens to 80 metal music. Like maybe someone listens to country, maybe someone listens to anime, Tokyo pop. Like you don't, you don't really know. So I wanted to sort of just reach out to everybody. Um, so I wanted like a softer, you know, more lighthearted shirt. So I was like, all right, well, why not? Let's just do like a owl bear, but let's make it like super cute. Like let's make it like very friendly, merry, like family oriented and like some of my friends that have kids were like you should make this in kid sizes because this is awesome and i want this yep. for my children like okay i'm gonna have to look into that with, but with the, uh, um, i'll definitely consider it for sure with the possible well, with, with we know the the imminent release of rhyme of the frost maiden is coming out from dungeons and dragons yep. um i know it's a pathfinder channel but uh, dungeons and dragons um <laughs> what about a snowy owlbear are you gonna do like a snowy owlbear variant uh, maybe it might not be for a while though, because yeah. the, these ones right here are actually a limited run uh, for right. the time being. Um, just because the the material, the, the way it's printed, it's just it's more expensive to get that one. Uh, same with the Shambler shirt; those two are were relatively expensive to order. So I'm only going to do a limited release for those, and then maybe I'll revisit them later. Right, let's see if we got any more quick questions. Yeah, Cantina's still here. Just checking, and also uh, for everyone who is checking out the uh, the URL uh, Ryan's website, remember there is a voucher code of Band of Badgers, and that will give you a ten percent discount. Is, is everybody okay with that? Now, uh, just kind of wrapping that. Thank you very much again for joining us, Ryan. Um, it was very nice of you. Now, you did say you have a giveaway. I do. Uh, so it that will bring us. To, oh, go ahead if you want to. I, I was going to say, is it is it a, sh a random shirt? Can they pick their own, or do you have a special item? A specific one. Uh, yeah. So this is going back to Cantina Thirteen. This is um, uh, my current favorite design. Um, now I can't release really what they're working on, but I can say that it is vicious mockery related, the bard cantrip. So uh, when we're coming up with an idea for that. I was thinking, well, why not do something from the victim's point of view instead of doing something like, you know, a bard and like some clown get up saying whatever. So this is what we got. Nice. Yeah, I like that. Sure. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and that That's cool. is called mockery. Yeah. Close. Not out yet. It will not be out for a while. I'm not sure when. Uh, I gotta bug Dylan about it. But 
I will be giving this one away to someone in chat. They can get cool. it before it hits the store. What's a, what code into, word can we do, Steve? I've already done it. It's been running uh, cool. while you were talking. So the code word is spawn. Um, if you enter spawn into chat, you stand a chance of winning um, the mockery T-shirt from Ryan. <laughs> We have we have some more comments so, from and an exclusive. Yep, we have more comments from live chat. Um, if you make so, this is question. What was it question questionable vegetable? vegetable. Questionable vegetable. Uh, if you make streetwear future funk shirt, I will buy it immediately. Or vaporwave. Well, I'm going to truthfully have to Google what both of those things are. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm sure I can figure something out. There we go. Should we get more entries into the competition? Go, go, go. We're going to pull it in any second. So last <laughs> chances to get in there. Uh, we, need, we need a sweepstake on whether Undead Corpse will win it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not banned. It's my turn. <laughs> you're you're, you're yeah. banned. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I, won, I won two in a row at one point. I don't think I'm going to be as noble as you. <laughs> yeah, we, we've got think... a second second vote from Wild Space Chase for a uh, D and D vaporwave shirt, so I'll, right. I'll, I'll have to Google that one as well. Yeah, let me let me jump into Google here quick. <laughs> uh, just yeah. a few shout outs. Thank you to everyone for joining us uh, this evening. We are gonna. What's going to happen is because it's going to be nearly midnight here, and you know we're, we're tired. We've been working all day as well. Is we are. We are going to continue. So we're going to have a little spin on this. So if Ryan is free next week, are you Ryan? Is putting you on the spot. As of right now, yeah. Are you welcome to to come back and join us again? We'll continue the the catacombs. Oh, that's what you're going to ask. Uh, I have to actually check my schedule. I might be busy. Uh, yeah, Alex, I, sh I should be free. Yeah. yeah thank you. <laughs> uh, no, feel um, pressured, Ryan. Then, but no it would pressure. be good to have you again. But, but, I'm going to spend I, I another like week with these guys. guys. Yeah. But, yeah. Right but also Theo, Gallant Goblin, because I know you're in you're in chat as well. Um, what we'll do is we mentioned we were talking about this yesterday. So Theo, what we'll do is we'll do that kind of uh, team up, but as a practice because we haven't actually done this, tried this before. Um, but we'll have both Ryan and next week's guest on at the same time. So we'll get Theo on from Gallant Goblin, and we can. So we'll, we'll have. A lot of <laughs> so, so that'll be seven players next week. We'll make room for Theo as well. But what we do is some kind of handover. So as Ryan uh, joins us next week and we finish the catacombs, then we can kind of say say a proper goodbye to uh, Zamba, and then uh, Theo, if you're available the following week as well, maybe if you are, then we can kind of extend that. So you all kind of get two. You you both get two sessions that way to tell your story and also so for people who, who are viewing this live these characters are potentially recurring characters so this might not be the last time you, you see them uh, when when Theo joins you know we'll we'll have a few uh, a few choices to pick from okay this this campaign is going to be going on for a while but it's only because it's midnight here in the UK and we're going to be wrapping up it's one of the one of the issues if we, if we can work out you know the time difference uh, we just work out teleportation and everyone can <laughs> play in the same room once we get rid of lockdown. Uh, that'd be really um, cool. We should, we, we should I just want to make a quick comment. Um, I checked out the Vaporwave. I looked at, I looked that up. Uh, so if you go to uh, sessionzero.com and you go to the Cublet shirt, if you go to that page, right underneath the picture, you'll see uh, drawn by, and it'll say Christina Cavadias. Uh, if you click on her name, it will bring you to her Instagram page. Almost all of her work is this style. She does a lot of like anime style drawings um, with like the vaporwave background and and very very intense like all colors and, and it's that's pretty much exactly what I think everyone's looking for. So if this is what you guys are looking looking at <laughs> wearing, then I will uh, see if I can reach out to her again and work something out with her. Um, so, yeah, I try to I try to link out link all the artists on each of the page. So that way, if you want to see more of their work, you can just 
click on their name in my page and bring it right to their Instagram or website. That's cool. Nice. We just got another comment in in live chat from uh, Wild Space Chase. You can make all the guests fight to the death. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> yes, that might actually happen. We'll have to <laughs> come back next week and you'll find out. Um, that that would be Wait. pretty good. We could, we can make that happen. That's fine. Bring them all back for the last episode for a Royal Rumble. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Now, also, we <laughs> promised. Um, uh, I know we said we're going to wrap it up, but, but but we are. Theo, if you're if you're uh, if you're tuned in still, if not, I'll, I'll drop you a message tomorrow. But we'll we'll talk about that and get that arranged. Um, we've also got a Beedle and Grim T-shirt to give away. If you want a Beedle and Grim T-shirt, Steve will just set up a competition. Who's the winner, Steve? We need Ryan to pick a winner first, don't we? Well, I need to press the button that says roll it. Go ahead. <laughs> roll it. This is for session zero. Hey! <laughs> no, it's session zero, <laughs> shit. Fix. Fix. No, it's not me. It's right. not me this time. Just just to kind of to point out. <laughs> you, you weren't even entered. I, I turned you off. <laughs> it so, must be destiny. <laughs> Joe, Joe has just won, but we 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 kind of we had a vote last time to say, well, we can't keep winning because <laughs> Josh has won. Yeah. Josh has won too. So Jack Webb, twelve oh five, through the really power of me pressing one, the button again, um, <laughs> has won the giveaway. So congratulations, Jack Webb, twelve oh five. Congratulations, Jack. Well done, well done Jack. Jack Webb. Do you, Ryan, does Jack Webb sound familiar to you? Uh, is he one, one, one of your one designers? <laughs> no, it's not a designer. I think he's one of my my twin friends. I'm going to have to figure out which one it is. Cool. Everyone's on there. Now we've got a Beedle and Grimm t-shirt to give away as well. So the Beedle and Grimm t-shirt is uh, a random... Not a random selection. Right. You, you can pick what you need. Um, so if we... Uh, Steve is just going to set up the next competition and then we can pull a winner for Beedle and Grimm. Yeah, I, I will just roll it again. Um, uh, yeah, he said he's one of the twins. And, uh, oh, it's Zombies Ain't zombies My Brain. brain. There you go. He says, it says it's Anthony. Zombies so, Ain't My Brain. Yep. Zombies, he's won another one. And a good zombies even. He has won the V&G shirt. V&G, excellent. So, so if you uh, whisper me... Uh, your email address will will sort that out and get that um, get that information to Beadle and Grimm, and uh, they'll be in touch with you uh, with a voucher code or whatever, and you can go to their site and choose uh, choose one of their fine shirts. But yeah, not necessarily as fine as as uh, Ryan's. <laughs> well no, no no cublets <laughs> on BNG, unless of course they're interested in in you know getting in Contact with Ryan and uh, doing some sort of collaboration. I would love to collaborate <laughs> with Beedle and Grimm's. We are doing um, yes. I, I, I'm not. I'm not saying yes for Beedle and Grimm um, on their behalf. <laughs> what I'm saying is they are very open to collaboration. So um, that's that's why why we're here. That's why we're doing this. So um, yes, there are there are certainly possibilities. Oh, perfect. I'm looking forward to those possibilities. <laughs> we, we will we will keep all all channels open but that's the point so it, again for for viewers who are watching this live and if you happen to be watching this on youtube tomorrow next week a couple of months from now um you know the the point of of this show the guest player slot is for people uh if you're like ryan who if you're a writer an artist a creator of some kind um and, and it's something to do with the role-playing or TTRPG community, then use us as a platform. Come on. Um, have a game. It's a little bit of fun. That's all it is. And meet new people. Um, do a giveaway if you're able to do a giveaway. Talk about who you are, where you come from, what inspired you, and just get involved. Um, that's how I met Ryan. I met Ryan from uh, Gen Con, which was a couple of months ago now, just online. And it, I kept seeing session zero pop up in the chat. And I was like, okay, he's asking some, some pretty in-depth questions. And when we finally did the Beadle and Grimm reveal with Band of Badgers, I was able to kind of then say, look, come on, we're doing this. Why don't you come on as a guest player? 
that's how we, we were doing it. But we've been talking since. So mm-hmm. that's how we get these things done. So if you want, if you're a creator of any kind, do get in touch. We're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Smoke Signals, I don't know. Pigeons? Which Pigeons. app is that? Smoke Signals? I didn't know that one. Pigeons, yeah. Bricks. Rotary telephones. Yeah, do it the old fashioned way. Faxes. Walkie Talkies, Channel 4. Um, anything. Nokia 3310. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you've got cat pillar on it. Um, so get, get in touch, okay? That's all we can say. Um, and let's have a chat. You know, Ryan was one of the first, but yeah, uh, I, I've been really impressed with his work. So, and again, we've had several chats after this and emails backwards and forwards. So it's really good. And it's by meeting people like that who share a passion for just having some fun, not taking, you know, ourselves too seriously. Everyone's in lockdown around the world. Let's let's in, let's have a bit of escapism and a bit of fun. Yeah, I think the, the, the biggest thing that I love about this community is everyone is so welcoming. So don't like if anyone in the chat right now knows me personally, you know that this is like one of the things I would never do five years ago, don't be shy about it. Just reach out to somebody, message someone. Be like, hey, I love d and I love Pathfinder. Let's let's talk about stuff. Let's, mm. everyone is just so awesome. Right back at you, Ryan. Thank you. Hey, thanks, you guys are great. Mm. I love what you did with the place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we still well. got to do the kitchen and the bathroom. <laughs> there's, there's, there is still so much more to come as well. So again, we're, yeah. we're so many more dodgy characters. accents. Oh, definitely do- dodgy accents. There's, um, there's, a, there's a ton of stuff going on. Uh, we'll save some more giveaways for for next week. We'll we'll start wrapping up there again. Thank you, Ryan, for joining us. We'll see you again next week. Uh, Theo, if you're there, uh, we'll see you next week as well, and we'll get everybody on uh, the game, the show, the episodes all together. Do one big happy family! Yay! Cuddles, cuddles, free hugs, uh, free or hugs. face huggers. If we get off, we will, we're doing a, yeah. an alien game. <laughs> That's got that less coming. friendly. That's yeah. less friendly. But they're so close. And it's the French <laughs> kiss that goes for Personal it. space. We learned nothing from the last few months. <laughs> yeah. Social so distancing. Different, different kind of, yeah. Maybe kind the real rock will be back. And we've got, um, yeah, you know, just stay tuned in terms of Banner Badgers. We've got more projects coming soon. And again, we're looking at this as some kind of format as well. So... We, we might be doing this for Tomb of, Tomb of Annihilation, which is going to start in a few weeks' time. We are also looking at a sci-fi game. Now, this could be Alien RPG, or it could be Starfinder. Um, again, we're waiting to see, but if you would like, especially, you know, Ryan, uh, if you would like to come back and be involved in, uh, in, in something like that, a little bit different. Yeah, 100%. Um, and likewise, we, we could be uh, opening this up even bigger. So who knows? Those are things going on. Everybody call to uh, it's it's a minute to midnight. Everybody call to leave it there to wrap up. Yep. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Happy. Well, Ryan, I hope you enjoyed it. Week. Midnight. It's only seven o'clock. We got a few more hours. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can go play the other game now. <laughs> go have some go have some dinners. Right. Thank you everyone for joining us. We've been Band of Badgers. You've been fantastic, and we will see you all again next week and see you online. Bye. Remember, Bye. who is your okay. daddy and what does he do? Yeah, <laughs> kill me. <laughs> I'm right gonna... here. Oh, yeah, I was just going to push the button and you can keep talking. We'll, we'll, have to, we'll leave the mic Get up. to the chopper.